Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device and you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps so if you are on a desktop you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well you can also enable subtitles and the little cc on the screen will enable closed captioning that way if i am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. <clears throat> How's it going? Yes, I'm here, Shem. <laughs> hey, Terry. Hey, Fiona. Hey, Ray. Amy, Margaret, Malin. How's it going? Yeah, you are, Terry. You're early. Um, so I was just going over the zipper fly instructions on this. They looked like, like when I saw the pieces, I was like, oh, these look like how I usually sew a fly, but then I started reading them. I was like, this is not how I usually sew a fly. So I was writing down a little like cheat sheet for myself. Hey, Carrie, Nancy and Michelle, how's it going? So I kind of stopped halfway through cause I was like, oh, this is like, um, like it's fine. Like they're, they're not like bad instructions, but then I was just kind of like, this is so involved. Like, uh, and, and, uh, just, so, just so, um, you guys all win the argument, especially Shem. The front of this is flat fell, the rise. And I'll bet the back was supposed to be too. <laughs> hey, Allison, how's it going? But I didn't sew it using the instructions, you know. This has one, two. Oh, those are the button fly. Because I was about to say, there are like 10 pages for sewing this fly, but some of them are button fly. But there is a lot of pages. Like I have two pages per page here. So so let me just write a few more things down um, because I wanna make sure. I was just gonna do it the way I usually do it, but then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna sew this the way the instructions are just in case someone's looking for that kind of tutorial. And I just wanna make sure I do it pretty close to what it says here. Where do I stop writing down things? Right here, okay. Okay, so we're gonna clip. Um, right front to dot, uh, press, <laughs> move the zipper out of the way and stitch along the fold of the jeans. What I'm kind of confused about is that there's no top stitching along the center front seam. And I really like that look, you know? Yeah, absolutely, Shim. I mean, um, I, you know, it, it's, I feel like there's lots of ways to do it. And I actually think most of the people who do these um, patterns, they know one way to do it. Maybe they know another way, but they don't really like that way. Um, and I don't really feel like a lot of them, and I'm actually not knocking them for this, even though it's probably gonna sound like an insult, uh, because I know that it's kind of like this, scary step and it's it's like this it's honestly one of the weirdest things we sew I feel like as a zipper fly it is the weirdest like how someone came up with it and how it all works and what affects what 
is really interesting to me. Um, and I'm going to do, I wasn't going to do a skill building session on this. And I realized I am going to do one on it because I actually want to understand when you do this, this happens. When you don't do this, this happens. And so then you can kind of pick and choose what you want, right? And I think a lot of people don't really understand how, what affects what. So like my ash jeans are such a good example. I really don't like the way the zipper shows every time I wear my pants. It, it's, it's such a bummer. You know what I mean? So um, I like it when it's tucked away from the center front seam so you can't see it. Oh my goodness, hi Louise. Uh-oh, excitement. You're making scary pattern adjustments in a raglan sleeve shirt using cutaway pockets from the skill. Ooh. Oh, good luck with raglan, raglan sleeve fitting. That is not the easiest sleeve fitting. Hi, RG. How's it going? Your first panini hobby loss. Uh-oh, it's a roommate. <laughs> oh, man. That's a, um, that's a tough hobby because you have to manage it because it's a living organism. I'm glad you're back, Allison. I know it's tough to squeeze in all the streams. I feel like the guild people are getting really sick of me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Shim. And you know, I don't, and so that's why I'm actually reading through because if it's not in here, I want to make sure I get it in there if I can. Hey, Sydney. Yeah, I think so, um, Malin. I think it would be because I think then you can have different options. You can go, all right, that one looks like, I, this is the other thing I wanted to say and I didn't finish saying is we all process things and learn things differently and different things kind of speak to us and seem less daunting or more enjoyable or um, least the path of least resistance. You know, so I think that finding the different zipper fly that you like that makes sense to you, um, I think is key. So to not hang over the left side in the final stitch down since I draft my own fly. The zipper flies, how to get the zipper tape to not hang over the left side, left as you're wearing it or left as you're facing it. You got a job sewing. Congratulations. You can't have a job at YouTube work anymore. The irony. <laughs> oh, Louise, I'm sorry to hear it. But I, I, I'm hoping you're enjoying the big city. There's probably lots of really fun stuff to do. <laughs> that's great that's awesome Louise I feel like you're um like the sewing is the the gamers version of um stay at home club you know and we don't get out of we, you cannot get out as much <laughs> as you're facing it with the zipper flies how do you get the zipper tape to not hang over the left side and as you're facing it from the right side or the wrong side of the jeans. Um, maybe you can shout at me when I get to that point. Left side and the final stitch down. Do you mean like it's poking out and you can see it from the inside? Because I, I sometimes I think, yeah, some flies you see them and some you don't. App right, Michelle. Because, you know, like gamers, when you hear them talk, they're like, oh, I need to go outside and touch grass, you know, or I need some sunshine, or I haven't been outdoors in a while. And that's kind of true for some of them, you know. So Louise is living, um, you know, <laughs> we're living all through Louise. <laughs> um, all right, so let me just write down a few more things here because I want to just see where where it goes from this point here. Flip zipper and shield over onto the leg and press. I think what's confusing me too is the shape of the pieces and that you use a lining for, I think, the shield. Yeah. So that's funny. I'm going to do that because my denim is so thick. And Shem, I'm glad you're here. You really do recommend that I interface one side of the waistband then. I'm kind of scared because it's so thick. Um, maybe I'll just do this as I go. I'm getting kind of confused. It's hard to focus when I'm already got a lot of things going through my head about it. I got to love that she, her little seam ripper in the picture is, is this the clover seam ripper? <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so the, it doesn't, to me, look like the center front fly gets top stitched in this version. And that is like a, an aesthetic thing for sure. Oh yeah, okay, Shem. I knew I knew what you meant. Hey, Libby, how's it going? Studio cleaning today. <laughs> hey, Martina, how's it going? Nice to see you. What were you working on the last time I saw? I think you were working on something. Hey, Catherine, how's it going? Interface for a strong waistband as the fabric will soften. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. All right. Let's just uh, let's just start this process and we'll we'll see how I do. All right, so my zipper is an inch too long, boo. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> hey, Nancy, Nello, how's it going? All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, like sew the fly shield right sides together. So I ended up cutting my fly facing and my fly shield the same length because after all was said and done, that length didn't change much right there. So I, I'm pretty, it, that makes sense to me because I'm a little short waisted there. So I'm gonna put my fly shield right sides together and all I'm gonna do is sew across the bottom right here. Let me see, is this five eighths inch? I'm pretty sure this font is so tiny. This one has the 5 8 inch seam allowance on upper and the straight edge, but none on this edge. This one doesn't say anything, uh, but I think it's right, it's like right here somewhere. I saw it, there we go. Yeah, 5 8 inch. Oh, let's turn the machine on. I'm using white thread for this because it's my only piece that's dark. I'm using, this fabric is the, um, stuff I use for the peaks and valleys pants. <laughs> so it's a stretch rip stop, but it's not gonna stretch now because I interfaced it. All right, so we need to overlock, we need to overlock the curve here. This is the other weird thing about this fly is you don't overlock the whole fly and you also don't overlock one side of the fly which makes me a little nervous. So I'm gonna overlock it anyway, because you can't go wrong, right? Yeah, how do you, oh wait, uh, any excuse for the permanent crease in denim after washing? Oh, no, I don't think, I, I've never been able to get rid of that. Wh my husband and I, I'll answer that, in, I haven't read your thing, Kathleen, but let me, um, I'll, let me teach public chat. There's one on each leg. Yeah, I don't understand why that happens, but my husband and I have learned that when we had denim that was doing that really bad, because there was this trend in ready-to-wear jeans where the denim was doing that really bad, and he hated them because they would be get these creases and he couldn't get rid of them. And so um, we would make sure that the, the washer and dryer weren't too full, and he would make sure that he f he took out his jeans out of the washer when the washing cycle was done and he would kind of shake them out and then he'd put them in the dryer because it prevented some more. Really, Shim? I know, right? <laughs> the struggles. I just go through too many. I'm like, I'm going to buy a lot of zippers so I have all these sizes and then they, I, it's never the right size, you know? So um, how do you switch from the free to the skill building and the Mighty Network. What level gets skill building? Skill building sessions, if you want them every month, is the journeyest group. So if you go to the groups tab on the left side of the screen in the guild, it's um, just look at the journeyest group there. I think you can do a free month trial too. Or you can just buy the skill building sessions as they come out. I'm sorry some of them have been like, like $25. Like I'm hoping that they'll kind of get a little bit less than that. A little bit less than like, like, like I think that they're going to be around 10 to $18 is what I'm hoping. I don't know. It, it depends on, I always just a little go overboard with the information. So I don't know if it's a good trick or harmful. Back in a costume shop, we worked in college. We would spray diluted white vinegar on the stubborn creases. Oh, I don't think that would hurt anything. Do you see that, Terry? Diluted distilled white vinegar on stubborn. That's a really, I've never heard that trick. So, yeah, I might try that too. Um, 
I am wearing my Dawn jeans today, by the way, and I just uploaded a video, a review of them yesterday. This, the comment section uh, is been pretty good too. All right, where am I going? I'm going to surgery. Yeah, sure, Kathleen. Just let me know if you have any questions. You can even message me in there if you need help figuring it out, uh, because I know the, the network can be a little bit like, there's a lot going on in here. Once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. You know, it's like actually very, very easy to navigate, but there's just so much. All right, so here's my waistband and I need to iron this too. I wanna iron the right one. This is my left front, this is my right front. So, I like, silly me just yanked these apart. I think this is it right here. Yeah, okay. So uh, what do you guys think about me cheating on this, using this straight piece of Trico? <laughs> I love trying to horrify you guys in new and exciting ways. I think I can bend this and shape it. <laughs> if not, I can kind of cut it. I was running late today, so I was like, hmm. You know, I feel like I can, I can kind of ease it on there. I'm just gonna kind of lightly tap it on there. And then when it gets really bad, I can go like this. I was gonna trim that off, but I'm not gonna trim it off. I'm just gonna leave it. Someone is unsubscribing because I'm doing this. I, I can feel it. <laughs> I can't see the chat either, so. Have I said how often, how much I love this roll of Trico? Is it obvious? Is it making me a lazy sewist? I'm gonna read the chat. <laughs> right, Libby? I know the comments have been really in interesting. Yeah, I cut a dart in it. Oh good, you guys aren't flaying me for this yet. I love it when chats, you know, chats delayed sometimes. And then sometimes I'm like, oh shoot, I wish I would have seen that before I did that. Okay. Yeah, so look at that. Looks pretty good on there. It's nice and smooth. Let's iron it on real good. Kind of hovering my iron on it. Okay. So the big question is, do I change to white uh, to a matching serger for this? And I think I'm not going to only because it's going to be on the inside here, lined up to a seam, you know? So it will, I just lost that little piece, didn't I? Yeah, there it is. Anyone else have trouble keeping this thing on? It's very finicky. So we're gonna do this curve on this piece. If you're following along for the zipper fly, you're gonna do the raw edges together on your shield here.
And then I'm pretty sure the instructions say to only overlock your right front down to the notch. Let me check. Is it right front or left front? Uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't specify it. Let's see. <laughs> um, overlock. If you want to follow how she does it, it's the, on the right front leg. So if you're looking at it, it's this one here and you go down to the dot only. I, I put a notch where my dot is. So I'm just gonna peel it back like this. And I'm actually gonna do this side too because I want this edge to be finished and I don't think there's any other finishing. Yes, it's buried probably in a top stitching. But I'll, I'm gonna try the, um, the um, flat felling of the crotch seam just so I'm staying in the spirit of that and, and encountering any struggles that you guys might if you're doing it too. All right, let me just peruse chat. You guys talked a lot. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I think, Libby, I want to know more about the uh, people who did the, I want to read them. One, she said, she t told me one of them. And the other one, it's not you, Michelle, is it? Michelle, are, can, do you mind telling me who you are on Instagram? You don't have to say who your Instagram is in here. Because she said someone named Michelle Sows is uh, the other person who was pretty unhappy with the Dawn jeans and, and got a return, but she wasn't sure about that. She was gonna double check. You go crazy with the interfacing overlaps. I'm gonna see what they look like. So this is my, it's very thin stuff. Like it's very, very thin. Like I'm worried about adding to the thickness of my denim and it didn't really. So. <laughs> my antics, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's not, oh, okay, okay. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. It's, thank you, Carrie. It's not lazy, it's resourceful. They'll resubscribe after they calm down and think life over. <laughs> you guys are so funny. <laughs> You're the one with the antics. Also, my hair, I promise it, it looks better in person, but boy, on camera, it looks just like a crazy rat's nest. This is like what happened when I just like lightly blow dry it and I don't do anything else. I, I used to be able to encourage like the waviness in my hair when I live somewhere humid, but here it is just asymmetri asymmetrical, frizzy weirdness. And today I just didn't really want to do my whole hair. I try and give it breaks. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's when Michelle Libby. Oh, okay, okay. I thought she said Michelle makes. Okay. Yeah, and minimalist machinist. Yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I haven't read her thing, so I, I'm kind of surprised that it's gotten really bad flack. Like, I know this is going to sound crazy, but wasn't my review more giving it flack about the lack of showing it on sizes? <laughs> it was in the comment, she comment, Libby commented in, um, on the YouTube video. And so when someone else replies, she's going to get notified. So she probably saw the comment. That's why she knew. And she was paying, I could tell she was paying attention to that exchange. Cause I was, there was one, one person was like, yeah, I'm not surprised. These jeans have gotten really bad reviews by people. And then one gal was like, actually, I love them. And I have made the curved version. So I really, I love it when people tell me that because I don't want someone to be like, gosh, they've worked for me. Am I wrong? I want people to be like, no, this is really great. Um, it works for me. And it, I think it's just underscores my point that 
like these jeans are going to be a, such a great example. Like these jeans are like Libby loves these. They, these are work perfect for her. And for me, I am not the shape for these jeans. You know, like I'm not the same shape. And that's a good example of why like they can work for one person. Another person may be like, eh, you know, it's like liking other brands, right? Yeah, I think it was a long time ago, Libby. I have a feeling. Oh, it's in their saved stories. Ooh. Yeah, exactly, Carrie. And that's really what I was trying to say. It was like, how are we going to know? And if we don't know, then people aren't going to sew them, and then nobody's going to post them, or people will sew them, and they're not going to post pictures of themselves because maybe they didn't like them, don't do that. Um, you know, it's not Instagram's uh, responsibility to market someone's clothing. You know? Just saying. It's not my responsibility to tell these pattern companies, hey, you know, you should probably link to the curve version in your product description, you know? So, but I want to tell them that. <laughs> okay. All right. So I did, I surged my center front. I surged the fly and the fly shield. We're going to do the fly to the left front. And... My, this fly isn't overlocked. That's kind of bugging me. I, you weren't supposed to overlock this edge either, but I did. So we're going to line this up here like that. And then I don't think, oh yeah, then now we're going to, yeah, we're going to, yeah, 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 we're going to sew this. We're going to sew this at the seam line. Be precise with your seam allowances when you're doing a zipper fly because it couldn't be, it can be the difference between your zipper showing or not showing or um, not laying very flat. So, yeah, and you know what, Malin? That's another thing I realized. Yeah. Okay, so this is normally when I would top stitch. Oh, no, it's not. Never mind. Center front, center front, all right. Fly to left front. All right, and now we're going to baste this together. This is so weird to me. Okay, so we're gonna line up our center fronts. I'm gonna look at the instructions. I know someone's probably like, well, if you need to look at the instructions, why am I looking at you? Yeah, I've never sewn these <laughs> before. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we did the first view A step seven. We did the very first one and your zipper fly right here, this is supposed to meet that dot marking and on, on my pants right here, it's gonna be this little notch, right? So you can kind of see. And then I'll bring the camera down a little bit too, just so you can kind of see a little bit. Yeah, you know, Carrie, because you have to search their website. They just forgot to link it. So on all their others, it'll say, hey, if you're looking for um, these sizes, go here. And they really need to link it in their ash. So this is the dogwood denim, Amy. Single color shawl for fingering weight. Not finding anything on super size. Ooh, I might have some, Sydney. I like the some of the through the loops designs. What's her name? I like lace though. Do you like lace? Not not intense lace, but I like lace. I love yeah, yeah, dogwood denim. And it's linked in the description. Hey, Elena. Elena was added to the comments section yesterday. We were talking about the Dawn jeans in the comments. Yeah, okay. All right. All right, so we sewed this to here, and now we're going to um, sew our center front. There's so many, there's so much text for just saying, sew your center front and base to the dot. But I just wanna make sure I don't miss anything. All right, so we're gonna baste the center front to the dot, and then we're gonna sew with a regular stitch for the rest. So try and line up your seam here, your, your front edges, right? And now put it to a basting stitch because you will be removing this later. 
This is so weird. And I'm gonna stitch right, I'm gonna stitch right next to the stitching. I've never done it this way before. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's wrong. <laughs> I would feel like I'd say that. <laughs> hey Suzanne, how's it going? Welcome. Yeah, me too, Elena. I'm glad she that, that gal ch chimed in because I really wanted to hear that. All right, I'm at the dot and now I'm gonna put it back to my regular stitch length and I'm gonna back stitch right here. Don't forget to back stitch. I'm really having to push. Okay, there we go. All right, and now we're gonna trim just the right front. Make sure it's actual, or it's actually the left front, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, left leg and zipper fly only to a quarter inch. And you're not going to trim this one here. So we're just gonna trim this little area right here. This is fun. I love doing something new. All right, be careful. There's a few things going on down here. Ugh, it's a messy serger stitch. What do you do about that shim? Like that is my pet peeve. You know? Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, me too, Michelle. Yeah, you need some lace. It's Rambouille and it seems to be wool and spun. I think it'll be warm. Um by Annie Knits. She has some really beautiful shawl designs. Oh, really, Libby? Oh God, don't tell me that. You're making me sound like this will show. Will this show? Oh yeah, you should look at By Annie Knits. Annie Claire is her name. I'm pretty sure it's Annie Claire. Um, she, um, her husband, she's got a really interesting story. I actually knew her back in Humboldt County because they raised dairy goats. And my husband at the time worked for Cypress Grove Chev, uh, which is like this world famous um, goat uh, cheese place. And she is a knitting designer and I was chicken boots. And it was so funny like that we were kind of like, sort of like in these similar circles and in this same obscure region. So, um, but then they moved to East Coast and they have their own dairy farm of goats. I haven't kept up with her, but um, she has some really beautiful designs. She's very, very clever in her designs. Oh yeah, I know that one, Shem. <laughs> there you go, Libby. You can do the next um, uh, skill building session. Sorry, I'm taking too long. I'm always procrastinating when I'm trying to I have to read instructions and d do this live. Okay. Okay. Press seams above the dot marking open. Okay. Press seams open. Why is that showing the fly going that? Okay. Yeah, it is. That's the way it goes. <laughs> With jeans laying flat, wrong side facing, you place the zipper face down along the edge of the zipper tape with the seam allowance of the wearer's right leg. You'll want the zipper soft to be, all right, yeah. So we're gonna take our zipper, we're gonna put it face down, all right? And you're gonna line this, the zipper tape up to the to the dot. Like you really like, like it says it can be three quarters of an inch. So if your zipper tape is really long past here, like mine kind of is, then you could just measure it like that, right? All right, so this is what I love, love, love. And I, if there's any chance you can, use the correct zipper length for what's intended for the pants. It makes the overall sewing easier, less stressful, and more successful. And I can't believe I'm actually saying that, but I actually do believe in that now. So especially when it comes to this, because if you have the zipper stop away from this edge, when you go to top stitch that curve around the fly, you won't be worried or stressed out about it, right? And if your zipper tape stops here at the, you know, like this, you don't have to worry about sewing through metal teeth, right? By any knits. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's it. I can find her for you. 
All right, so we're gonna line up this zipper tape to the seam right here, right? Go to the seam, like that. This is why, this is where I'm like, this is how, not how I would do this. Because then now you put the shield on top like this. And we're going to line up the top edge there. Um, I just lost my pen. Thanks, Libby. <laughs> I want to see your method too. Is sit in power sewing? Is sit in power sewing? Are you tinkering with machines, Suzanne? Oof. All right, so we're going to line up this raw edge at the top. And we're gonna sew through all these layers. Oh. I didn't think I did that right. Oh yeah, I didn't. The see, this isn't how I would do this. Don't listen to me here. You're gonna line up the zipper tape to the, the raw edge here. See, this is the other thing, having it open like this, I would do this. <laughs> Move your pants out of the way. Put your stop above the um, dot. I This is really fussy in my opinion. And then I'm, I'm gonna pin it. Ow. And then I'm gonna line up these edges. In the picture, her shield goes past the dock by quite a bit. Maybe not though. Okay. Starting at the waist, sew using a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so we're gonna sew through all these layers. So basically we're attaching the zipper and the shield to the seam allowance only. I should put a zipper foot on. I don't like using my zipper foot though. I should get a different one. I don't like it when my overlocking will show past the seam. I'm having to push it really hard so that it stays at that quarter inch. All right, so I mean, I'm gonna so they go just to the dot. Yeah, the dot marking, which is like right here. For me, that's like a quarter of an inch from the bottom of the fly shield. Oh, I thought I caught that in there. I guess I didn't. I have a, I've been doing, I'm gonna start doing some polls on my community page, my community tab, and um, I'm loving seeing all your answers. Um, <laughs> Chaz wrote, um, my first poll is, how many sewing machines do you own? And I have to actually give you um, places to click. And uh, Chaz wrote, just don't start collecting vintage machines. Those things multiply while you're not looking. <laughs> I instantly thought of Terry. <laughs> So funny. Okay, uh, so this is how this is looking right now. I was just securing my serger tail just now, and let me trim my back stitches. Trim a lot of your threads as you go because getting back in here can be a little tricky, and you'll be a lot more proud of your work if it just looks nice and neat. Right, so this is what it's looking like. We just sewed this to the seam allowance there, and with a regular stitch and everything, right? <laughs> machine porn. <laughs> we have a machine topic in the guild. <laughs> okay, so now we're, I'm going to page 22 in the instruction booklet. At the dot marking, clip into your seam allowance of the wearer's right leg only. So on this leg here, we're going to clip into the seam allowance.
And you only want to cut the seam allowance. I feel like I'm going to cut the tape. I imagine if you know all these steps, it's, it's very easy. I'm afraid I'm going to cut into the tape. There we go. Okay. Cut into the seam allowance only on this one we didn't trim here. See that? This is the one I trimmed, so you can see it kind of peeling back right there. See that? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I think the Panini has uh, definitely found lots of homes for lots of sewing machines. Okay. Mm, flip zipper and shield over onto the leg and press. Flip it over onto the leg. Zipper and shield over onto the leg and press. Well, you can't really do that. I mean, I guess if you can keep it inside the seam allowance. Okay, like that. All right. Press. Edge stitch along the fold of the zipper seam to the left side of the zipper sewing through. Okay, so now we're flipping this over to, this is the right leg, like as if we're wearing them, right? See? And so we're gonna flip this over. This is getting kind of thick here. Flip it over and we're gonna edge stitch through all layers right here. Oh, my machine came on mute, threaded. You have to avoid that side of town. I love that the wrong side of the tracks was uh, really just sewing machines needing homes. <laughs> I don't really need a zipper foot only because this is so thick, I'm kind of above. So, and it is actually right along the zipper there. All right, so we're just edge stitching this. Like that, trim my threads, okay. Looking like that right now. That's so thick right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Means the zipper fly over the zipper and press so everything's laying nice and flat. Okay. All right, so we're going to arrange the zipper fly. This is your fly, the little curved guy. And I'm feeling like I got to pull my pants like this. See how it like wants to flip up? Cause trying to get that straight. I don't want to bubble. That's what I'm a little worried about. I don't want to bubble on the right side. So I want this nice and flat. And then pin the zipper fly to the seam tape only. Oh, I have an easier way to do this. Oh, okay, let's do this. Turn your pants upside down, okay? Flip it like this. This is a lot easier. Now your zipper just lays flat and it's very natural. Okay. And now we're gonna just put two rows of stitching in the zipper tape here. Two rows because we're just reinforcing it. Uh, and then this is another place you wanna make sure you're straight because this, I've definitely not been straight and it's affected the way it lays, so. That one wasn't very straight right there. I got on the zipper teeth, okay. You're not getting any cleaning done? You don't need to watch this. You have your method, <laughs> but you're curious. I know you're curious, aren't you? <laughs> okay, mm, okay, now we're on page 23. Lay the front jeans flat in front of you. So bulky. Okay. Using Taylor's shock, draw the top stitching lines on the wear's left leg, move the fly sheet out of the way, pin it to the wear's right. Okay, so now we're gonna top stitch our fly. Okay, so now we're gonna top stitch the fly. All right, so we're, I'm gonna pin this down. So we're gonna move this out of the way. You don't wanna top, that, top stitch that, otherwise you're not gonna be able to get your pants on. And I'm sure there's more than one person who has done that in the world. Put your pins perpendicular. I'm gonna use a longer pin as well because I don't wanna get hung up. 
because I'm going to pin from or sew from the right side of the pants right now. I'm really pushing hard with my hand to keep this all nice and flat, and I'm going to double check it too. You're so curious, yeah. I am too. This is why we sew all the different kinds, right? Like the Ash jeans, they are technically accurate. Like you sew it totally accurately. It's the way you're positioning things that makes the zipper exposed. So like the way um, the, the jeans I've sewn that don't do that are the Ames and the Ginger. Uh, because the Glissando, the Dawn, and the Morgan are all button fly. The Zen, the Mountain View are pull on. The men's jeans don't do that by wardrobe by me and the women's sew exactly the same. Same with the chinos by wardrobe by me. So, okay. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna top stitch our curve. Yeah, so we're uh, gonna lose our opportunity to top stitch the front. And I just don't think that and you, you don't lose your opportunity in those methods. So, bummer, bummer. All right, let's switch to top stitching thread. We're using a brown chestnut. Yeah, Terry, you like it? It's linked in the description. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm a little nervous about it. I wear a white shirt today because maybe if you guys are good, I'll try them on at the end. <laughs> okay, let me look at everything, make sure everything's still staying. Uh... Okay. There is a fly top stitching template. I actually did have it out, but I'm not sure I still have it out. I don't usually use those. Let's see if we can find it really quick. Here it is. What, oh, what did you get that's so much more fun? Did you get a button holder? Like one of those old vintage ones? Ooh. I don't know if Tennessee Attachment or um, does home stuff, but you might try a Tennessee Attachment. And then um, Gold Star. Uh, how about we just draw it on there? I have some gray chalk I think I might be able to see. I usually, why is it just pouring out? Um, I usually just do it by feel. You know, I can kind of feel the curve. And, you know, I, I trust my machine usually too. It will kind of stay on, you know, this like little shelf, right? because it's got like that little thickness there. All right, let's pin this guy out of the way too. We don't want to accidentally do what I was just saying someone might do. This is so thick. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So one thing I have learned with doing <laughs> two rows of top stitching, if that's what you're gonna do, is to make yourself feel comfortable, make sure like, okay, if I put two rows below here, am I gonna be okay? Like what, what is that looking like on the right side? Like sometimes just having that visual, right? Like there it is, right? Like, okay. That is outside of that gray stitch, the gray chalk line. Here's, here's the pin. You can't even see it on the camera, but there it is. See the shiny? I just poked it out, right? All right, so we know we're okay there. Um, and then the other thing I've learned is to do the outer one first, because if you do the inner one first, you might not leave enough room for the outer parallel one, and then you're falling off of your fly facing, which might bug you. And on a fabric like this, 
Well, I was gonna say this might be more forgiving, but because it's spoon flower printed fabric, I will say that some fabrics, the denim's probably gonna be fine, but some fabrics like, like the poplin and the sateens and those that are really smooth and tightly woven, when you put a needle hole in those, it's not very forgiving. Um, mainly because it's such a tight weave and because the back of the fabric is white. So say you're printing on a fabric, not all fabrics that are get printed start with a white base. And so when you put a needle hole through it, sometimes you can see that white. It's like, it's like a dotted line, right? So, and on denim, I find also denim to be pretty unforgiving when you're doing this little fly, which is like this focal point right there at the front, right, of your pants in that sensitive area. So if you pull out stitches, you gotta be really, really careful. So if you have to pull out your top stitching stitches, do them one by one. Um, don't do like ripping or anything like that because the denim, it's just, um, for better or worse, it's a little fragile for that. So I think that you really wanna get your stitching on here as best you can. That being said, if you go straight and you, and you need to take it out, just take it out, it's gonna be okay. I just wanted to warn you about that. So I'm gonna stitch right on this gray line. Use it as my outer edge here. But there were certain things we made that if we, at Chicken Boots, if we had uh, a second, we had to throw it away. There was no coming back, if it was spoon flour. All right, so this, this is why I do not like top stitching like this because right now, I don't, I feel like I'm gonna go definitely through the, the fly shield. Where's the, where's the gray line? Did I lose it? Oh yeah, it's up here, right? Oh, this is it right here. Yeah, so. Okay. Oh geez, okay, that didn't go well. Yeah, I kind of figured that wasn't gonna go well. <laughs> Let's turn it off for a second. Hi, Raquel. <laughs> oh, the heroin, did you get it? I'm thinking about it. <laughs> what did I hit? I, I hit the teeth. I literally just made myself feel better about not hitting the teeth and I hit the teeth. Did I hit the teeth? Yeah, I hit the teeth. What the heck? Did I use the wrong line? Ooh, that is one jagged piece of um, needle. Chahunka. All right. I don't know why that, it was so far away. A touch and so. All right. We're going to, I can't find all the pieces, so you know. That's when you want to clean for sure. Oh, here's a piece. Okay, that's the eye. I found that chunk. I threw away the shank. I'm just gonna look under there. <laughs> Yikes. It's not like, um, most of you um, that have like a, a removable bobbin case, I don't know if you know this, like on the Bernina, it's really easy to pop out that whole thing underneath. You just, there's these little arms and you go and you can pull it out and it all goes back in really easily. And I highly recommend taking that out occasionally and checking for stuff like that. You know, like I can't really do that on this one. So, you know, we're just gonna clean everything. And then we're gonna jump right back on the horse. Touchy and so. <laughs> All right, let's get another needle. Is it this one here? 
Nope, I want an 18. They're, they're way at the back of my thing because I don't have, I don't use these very often. The thing looks huge. <sighs> Why? 59 people here. Oh, you guys love your sewing drama, don't you? <laughs> All right. Sorry, Phoenix. I'm sorry. All right. Did I just see? Oh, no, it's a piece of thread. I thought I saw another piece of needle. I always hand crank my machine. I have it because it's the industrial. Um, and I can't, like, pull out that bobbin holder, you know? So... I kind of ease into it because I'm I get a little spooked about this too. But she's fine. And I'm a little mad, you know. <laughs> All right. This was my top stitch template. I don't know if that was my this I have to go below there. Look at how low this is. I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore this top stitch template. It's too short. I'm casting to my TV and it shows 60. Nice. It is there. Yeah, it shows me 62. Welcome. It shows me 60 in the control room, but only 53 on the screen. But the screen thing is probably it's an it's like a widget, you know. <laughs> I didn't tell if the heroine's on my list. Um, I have not made the heroine jeans, but I'm very open to it. The only reason I didn't was it didn't come in a lot of sizes. So when I was interviewing jeans for this project here, I wanted to make sure I had uh, pick. I picked a pattern that had a lot of sizes. All right. So here is my curve down here. So look, we're gonna remove some stitches. I'm actually gonna remove all of these stitches because I'm a weirdo about back stitches. So let's pull these out. And then, I mean, I could have probably pulled it to where I think I would put my bar tack, you know? But it's not very long, so I might as well just take it out so I have options and I don't have to worry about that. Oh, I definitely can't see it on this side because it's in my surging. <sighs> Has anyone else besides Libby, Libby made the Half Moon 101 jeans? I'm kind of curious. And how was your fitting journey? I'm thinking I'll do a review on these. Yeah, just you can only click it once, Shim, period. Thanks for clicking it. <laughs> we like a try hard, Terry. I can barely see my stitches. They blend in really well. I am seeing a little bit of my bobbin, but only when I start to take out the stitch. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll put in a bobbin that matches my top stitch thread right now for this since it's this area here, you know? It doesn't bug me like on the pockets here because the thickness is behaving. What's that noise? <laughs> I've seen YouTubers say, well, if you don't like the video, make sure you hit the like button twice. Like, seriously, come on. All right, get rid of all the threads. Make sure you remove all that. So let's do this again. I can see my gray on there. This first time I've ever, I will, and that's not the first time I've used a top stitching template, but I feel like it's one of the few times I've used it and, and it didn't go well. <laughs> all right, so here is my fly facing right here. We're gonna ignore the top stitching template. 
this thread, this uh, chalk better disappear. My favorite marking device, but it has failed me a few times. Okay, and now I'm gonna double check and make sure I'm going to make it on there. I wonder why this top stitching template is too short. Because I cut out the right size. I made sure of that. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not, Elena. That's a good, uh, good thing to point out, though. Six to 18, yeah. Exactly. The um, but what's the uh, smallest tip and biggest tip? Uh, and if you don't mind saying it in inches. Yeah, likes don't help me as far as an algorithm goes. Likes help me because then someone may go, well, a lot of people like that, so maybe there's something I'll enjoy, right? Oh, I forgot to change my bobbin. I'm out of sorts. I'm out of sorts. All right, so here we are down here, actually away from the zipper this time. Well, now you know what'll happen. Am I spooked right now? Yes. <laughs> Duchess jeans by Sew Me Something. Only pictured on one person on the website and one or two on Instagram. All right, I'm gonna hand walk right here because I'm human. I don't like this method. I don't like this method because this is way too thick. If you had a home machine, I'm just gonna say it, there's no way. There's just no way. So, and I also think like, I'm gonna put a back stitch right here and I'm gonna tell you what, I think this is going to be a problem in a second because when I go to the other side, I think what's gonna happen is that I will have um, stitched through the fly extension and it's gonna push it, um, I have to unpick some stitches. Oh, do you, Shem? You don't care about the um, bobbin? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's a really good tip, actually. Yep, see, I knew it. See, look, this is what happens when you sew it this way. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, DMAC. Violet, how's it going? So I don't know why people tell you to sew it this way, because this is what happens. There's no way you can avoid this. Hmm. I haven't had like a drink in weeks and right now it's like 12 and I'm kind of feeling like one right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So you see that this is a problem in my opinion. Um, I think in anybody's opinion, this is a problem. You can't not do that. And I actually really hate fixing this problem. This, it's one of my least favorite things because there's just like no really good way to do it, you know? So I'm disappointed. All right. Maybe I should try all these different zipper fly methods not on my project live on camera, huh, Shem? <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, I doubt they use the dogwood denim though. <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna unclip this now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish it off with the fly extension flat against the pant. See here? I'm gonna take out these pins now too. So this way, this way uh, it'll just make the extension stay over it. And, and we want that, right? We do want it down here. We just don't want it to be anchored up there. And I'm just gonna do one row because uh, getting the second row in there will be too tricky. I don't like the way my gray chalk is looking on here though. I'm scared. This is the zipper 
bottom. I just have to hold it to be comfortable. Oh, but you can hear it. I'm hand walking. Yes, indeed. All right. That's as far as I'm going. Okay. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. The Birkins, ha uh, they require like, it's like one or 2%. Can you take me a cocktail? <laughs> it's not in my calorie budget. <laughs> yeah, Katie, right? Yeah, oh, someone asked about the weight. It's 11.7 ounces. It's pretty, it's pretty hefty. Okay. And we don't get a top stitch here. Let's see where we're at. Shall we? <laughs> okay. Hmm. We're not doing that. Now we're going to um, flat fell the crotch at the bottom there, the bottom of the right, front rise. And you're allowed to catch the end of the fly shield. See, so this is the deal. Do you see how, how much of her fly shield is hanging freely below the circle? Mine didn't have that much and I didn't change this. So um, maybe this was just a grading issue that maybe some of them work better than others. So I would just kind of maybe look at that, like make sure that when you fold that pattern piece in half, this one here, see, look at that. I don't, I didn't have this much. I even notched it. Yeah, because look, you have a seam allowance. So when you take out that 5 8 seam allowance, you're left with, let's see. I'll draw it on here for you. Oh, really? Do you want to play Fortnite later? <laughs> it's my Fortnite buddy. <laughs> um, that's cool. I love sunflowers too. I got this to support a Ukrainian designer on Spoonflowers, which is like a fabric design website. So look, so if this, if I sew this seam here and we've sewn that seam there, we are, we only have notches usually go perpendicular. Yeah. Look, we only have that much. We only have like almost three eighths of an inch. And that's really hard to bend back and see, look, I had that, but I was supposed to bend this back while I did that. And I don't know. So I actually have that much and I don't know. All right. So let's do the, the flat filled seam. We're going to wrap this around the seam allowance like this. Let's do it on the iron. <laughs> Where's the mouse? That's not enough space. I did uh, I did do a quarter inch. You're right. I did do a quarter inch. I did. I wrote that wrong. Cool, DMAC, thanks. <laughs> it's okay if you're, you have other plans, though. All right. You can say no in my chat. They're not going to give you flack. They're just going to ignore us. Hmm, I'm reading chat a little bit. Okay, let's... Um, iron this rise here. I didn't have matching pocket bag fabric. <laughs> so we have some couple, it's kind of colorful in here. So we're going to wrap it around the seam allowance. Remember how we trimmed this right here? Oh, this is when I probably want my white thread back on. Oh, but we're going to do this from the right side though. So this is going to be probably pretty easy to do. My, my only thing about this is that you could end up getting some torquing right here on the front. And that's because this little edge isn't clipped. I think it's safe to clip this inner edge here, the shorter one. Just be really careful you don't clip your pants. These are not the scissors for that. These are not the scissors you're looking for. Okay. Themed pocket fabric, right? We're going like marigolds and sunflowers. Okay. 
I'm really eager to see how the zipper lays on this method. Because I hope after all this, at least the zipper doesn't show, you know? You know? Throw me a bone here. Okay. So I'm gonna pull this, make sure it's nice and flat. Get this guy under there as well. It's gonna be a nice clean finish. All right. Oof, that is bold. I don't know, you guys. I think you say I can wear these, but I think you're all laughing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We need to move this and this. There we go. I'm just drop my little scrap fabric. Let's move all these things here. And at this point, do we need these directions anymore? Okay, I know what to do next. So they say, they say to sew this from the right side. That's gonna be kind of tough. This is kind of a, I don't know. Can I sew this from the right side? Do I feel like I could? You know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do the shim method. I'm gonna sew this from the wrong side with white thread and then I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna sew it from the right side with top stitch thread, but I'm not gonna take out my white stitching. I already triggered you all doing my uh, waistband interfacing the way I did, right? Oh, I don't need to change this one. The Babette, okay, I need to write these down. Can someone write these down for me? The, the Duchess and the Babette. Um, and also, you guys, um, have any of you, I know a lot of you have heard of Jay Stern on YouTube. She's really great. She's really great, um, like her fitting, she has like jeans fitting things. I've watched a couple of them a couple of years ago and they're really, they're really pretty good because she'll show before and after, which I really appreciate. And she, I was, when I was in this uh, blog post, that when I was researching making these jeans, I found, you know, this blog post where someone wrote down all of the possible jeans patterns out right now, right? And one of them is a pattern by her, and I didn't actually know that she had her own jeans pattern. So, I checked them out, but there's no pictures on her website to buy them. And so now I'm hesitant because I was kind of like, ooh, this is it. This is the jean. This is someone who really cares about jeans fitting. She has all these tutorials. She knows her stuff. She's proven her that herself, right? There's no photos though. So I'm curious if anyone's made the J Stern jeans or if anything knows. The white will never, exactly, Shen. That's why we're doing it, right? All right, so here we go. So there's my little top stitching right there. This is how it's looking. Nice and clean in here. It's actually looking really nice that way. And we're going to now top stitch this front fly here. Not a fly, the rise here. I'm gonna do two rows. I'm gonna go up along my white stitching, across and down, like they do in the instructions. I don't really have a, the width I want, but it's okay. It'll be a little narrow. It's okay if you go onto your fly shield too. They want you to go up onto the fly up here. I'm gonna try a little bit, but I'm a little nervous about the thickness. Like, it is thick. <laughs> oh, that's cool, Terry. 
Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She just came out with something called the um, Frenchie. But I can so love looking at the stream when I do it like this. All right, and now we're gonna turn. She just hit 25,000 followers and she was doing a giveaway and she had a live stream Friday. I popped in there for a bit. That was really cool. She was giving away a sewing machine and um, some other stuff, which is really cool. I think, you're, I think the giveaway is next Friday or something. All right, we're back down onto the pant. All right, so that's how it's looking. I went up to there, you see that? I think I'm gonna do a little uh, bar tack right here. This is my original stitch line there. I'm gonna do a bar tack there, that's not a thread. <laughs> And then this will hold the fly shield over to there, like towards the um, fly and the zipper. And you kind of want this because it'll keep it all nice and clean looking and then it'll also prevent like that. Um, it's a point of strain, right? When you're putting them on and off. All right. Yeah, I saw that. When I saw it was no side seam, I was like, uh-oh, are we, here we are again. <laughs> All right, let's take out the stitching and see how they are. This is the true test. Okay. Ugh. I'm missing the top stitched edge. Okay, but the zipper it's, you know, it's like back there, so that's a good sign. Hey, Vestigia, how's it going? Oh, to her live stream yesterday? Yeah. She had like 25 people there. I think she's live every Friday. Okay. Let's see, how far are we going here? I mean, I don't wanna really go past my top stitching there. Can I pull these to this side? Probably not. No, I don't think I can. Oh, maybe I can, maybe I can pull it. Here we go, there's one. And then if I tug it, I get the other loop, yay. Okay. Having trouble grabbing it, but it's huge, a huge loop, it's just me. Okay. Do I hand tie or not? No, I'm not gonna hand tie. It's just the basting stitch. All right, let's see. It just looks really unfinished without the top stitching right here. I know it's really busy. I'm really sorry. This doesn't really show off these jeans very well, does it? But see how the soft the edge looks because there's no edge stitching here. And to add it right now is a little tricky. It's not impossible, but you know, anyway. All right, we're done with the zipper fly. An hour and 20 minutes later. <laughs> Okay, let's put the pants together. We've already got our backs done. I'm very nervous about this right here. This bump, this bump is still there even though we've been fitting them. I think the thickness of the denim is gonna make it come back. Yeah, the Frenchie jeans don't have side seams. Those aren't the pair I was looking at. Um, I was looking at this, the, just the straight up five pocket non-stretch jeans, just the classic, and there's just no pictures there. Maybe there are on the desktop, I could, but I was on my phone because I was like at home waiting for something to download on my computer. So, all right, let's get the white thread out though. Da -da -da -da. 
yeah, it's a wide waistband. She has like, I, I want to say like uh, three or five jeans patterns. That was a struggle. <laughs> okay, let's get rid of this stuff here. All right, we're gonna do our side seams. Actually, we could do a, a, a flat felled inseam. I think that that sounds kind of appealing for something this thick. Shall we? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Shem. I, I think like, oh no. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna do a flat filled seam here. I'm gonna, uh, it's, I didn't set it up for that, so I'm just gonna do my 5 8 inch seam allowance, trim one side, and then top stitch it down. There's no, oh, you know what? That's okay, that's okay. I was just thinking of another pair of pants just now, and I kind of panicked. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, it was this, it was this. I had to trim one leg shorter, so I just wanted to make sure that I match from the crotch. Yeah, see, look at that. And it's because of that, remember when I was telling you guys about the grain line issue when I cut these out? So yeah, that's okay. We're gonna start from the crotch seam. So this pair of jeans, to my knowledge, doesn't have that whole like, um, We'll double check, but it doesn't have the easing between the knee notches. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's cool, Ray. Yeah, she's super chill too. Yeah, absolutely. If you're going to do a flat filled inseam, you have to you don't have to do it first, but you're gonna be so much happier if you do it first because it's really hard to do once your side seams are sewn. So it's good to think about it ahead because I've definitely wanted to do that um, and, I, and I forgot. And then I'm like kicking myself, you know? So. Oh yeah, this is set up for uh, easing in the curves and fabric of the back leg approaching the crotch. Oh, okay, so there is some easing. Oh, okay, okay. I don't think there's that much though, but um, okay. I don't know if I have the notches now. I didn't see notches. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't see notches. I saw the like the thigh mark, but it was like up here. camera look. Trying to come up with some easing there. I would do wrong sides together, wouldn't I? Here's the problem, you guys. I'm just gonna tell you straight up the problem. The problem is I'm eating breakfast at 10.30 in the morning right now, which means I'm having coffee at 10.30 in the morning. This is the problem. I was gonna do it like this, where I do the flat fell seam 
and then stitch it to the inside like that. Yeah, that, yeah, see, that's how I was going to do it, but maybe, um, I'm just going to stick with this one. I'll take it out. I know that's kind of boring when I have to take something out, but, um, yeah, you can do wrong sides together too. That's true. <laughs> we should have talked about that. <laughs> Yeah, the J jeans, yeah. Yeah, maybe they're not the ideal choice. So, selvage denim means, well, that there's no side seam. No curved side seam, what? I didn't think that had anything to do with that. I'm not, I mean, I'm not a denim expert, but, uh, so I, I could completely be wrong. I'm happy to be wrong, you know? Yeah, then the bobbin is the top stitching. It's true. Yeah, so it is kind of a missed opportunity for the top stitching thread, unless you do it from the right side, which would be hard. Yeah, and having the bulk on the outside is pretty ideal for something this heavy. I just did this like my usual way I do this because I usually do this on men's shirts. I do the, um, yeah, the um, armhole and side seams often as a flat fell. Make sure I put my back stitch right there. And then you usually do it to the the front, right? Sirens. I mean, she's doing, yeah, yeah, that's that one though. Does they say that they were designed for salvage denim? That is later, that is later than before. Yeah, this, these, the back was, the center back was supposed to be flat felled. Yeah, these are, she's doing these um, right sides together for the flat felling. Oh, and she's pressing it towards the back leg. That fellow seems toward the back. Okay. All right, so we're going to trim this edge here. All right, so when you're like trimming only one edge, I say put the edge that you're trimming on the bottom so you don't accidentally trim anything else. Why is, why is that? Why do selvage, I was just reading about denim, but I was reading about it like, I think in January. That's a long time for me, like a long time ago for me. Isn't selvage denim also narrower? The sewing police. <laughs> right? They're out to get me. Now it's probably the for the guy in here that's um, literally letting all of his crew walk through here with muddy boots, and the mud here is red, um, and so there's these. It's like it's like bloody footprints because it's literally leading right to his door. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> there's like no denying who's doing it, and it's like gobs of mud, you guys. Like we're not talking like uh, a little bit of dirt. It's like someone walked in a clay pit right outside the door and then walked through the whole office over and over. 
the the guy who does the like maintenance came in here, I guess, and um, my neighbor was like, yeah, he was here the other day, and he was like, what? This is an office. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get the carpets cleaned. <laughs> the whole thing was so funny. Yeah, it's narrower, I remember that. Yeah, that's right, it's so the finished edge shows when you cuff it. Wow. Okay, let's iron this. Yeah, I don't think that that's a good reason to make a pair of jeans without a side seam, though. I'm just saying. I mean, not without a side seam, I'm sorry. With um, the uh, with no curve, you know? So flat fell is a little different than a French seam. In some ways, you might have done a flat felled seam without knowing that's what you were doing because you were desperate to finish an edge and you were like, what if I just hem, hem the seam allowance over itself, you know? And that, that's kind of a, a flat felled seam. But yes, you can do it so that this little hem is on the outside of the garment, like Shem was saying, where you would do this wrong sides together first. And that is nice because like you said, you can keep your nice top stitching thread on the outside, and you can also keep the bulk of the seam on the outside, which is kind of cool. Maybe I'll just press this whole thing first. So if this is flat filled and this was flat filled, um, that would be really thick to go through. I offset mine, thankfully. Or did I? Yeah, I did. <laughs> thankfully. I'm pulling pretty hard to press this flat. the white look on the screen. It's pretty bad, huh? Let me make it a little darker. I'm still here. Oh yeah, I still have the waistband to go. I'll be here a little bit. That and I'm kind of a bonehead, you know? There's that. But that's why you're here, right? Hey, Mafio. Yeah, I think they did start as men's. I mean, most jeans did. <laughs> Do I want to do this? I mean, maybe. Let's see. Nah, I'm just going to do it all at once. I think that that doesn't really help that much. If I were doing denim, I think I'd much rather like this seam on the right side because of the look of it. Denim meaning a solid color. This busy print, um, I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna like miss seeing the top stitching as much as I would normally. The like contrast thread, you know? I think you'd, you have to do this. Iron this first. It's pretty straightforward. Like it wants to hug that little trimmed edge. That's gonna barely make it right there. Barely make it. I saw Jay Stern use Wonder Tape, so now 
I mean, I understood what you guys were saying and I understood what it did, but seeing how she used it, she was actually using it on a, a flat felt seam. And she didn't quite have enough seam allowance, so she was like, well, I'm gonna use Wonder Tape. And it was pretty genius. Like, you know, she could put it, I think she put it um, right here along this edge, peeled off the sticky side, um, the other sticky side, and then when she folded it, it wrapped around and it just stuck. Well, that's pretty cool, I admit. Like imagine not having to sew at all, just wonder taping everything together. <laughs> Is that a thing? Is it permanent? Does it, it must wash away, right? I mean, it's literally like tape, glue. I'll have to try it one of these days. I think I'm gonna have to have a gadget stream though soon, or maybe a week of gadgets, because right now I have my Elgato stream deck I really wanna set up. I have the binding attachment I wanna show you guys how to uh, install if you are interested. Um, I have a projector uh, that I want to set up, and there's something else. Um, what's the last thing? One of you will remember, unless I, I haven't told you about it yet. Can't remember. Oh, geez. That's why I don't like having office chairs. But that was my foot. It got caught under the foot pedal and pulled it up. Wonder tape washes away. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I think I will, Raquel. I have a hammer handy. Pretty sure it's right there. Just for that reason. Gadget week. <laughs> Terry's like, yeah. <laughs> right? I feel like I'm getting behind on some of those things. And um, I actually would really like to incorporate some of them, you know? It's a binder attachment for this machine. The projector for cutting out patterns on my fabric, yes. <laughs> Is there a downside to it being permanent? Like, uh, like does it show or something? Kind of like an interfacing lid? Oh, it makes your needle gunky. That makes sense. Yeah, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily initially think that's what it would do. The only thing I've sewn that made my needle gunky was when I sew my wax um, bags. So I, I sometimes will make um, wax wraps for food storage. I really like them. Like once I started using them, I like them better than little plastic bags because you can like cover a bowl or I love it for holding an avocado it keeps it from getting brown as fast um, but I, I like to make my wax wraps into usable little like zip bags where I use a zipper <laughs> and the bees wax wraps like it because because I use the pine resin and the jojoba oil in it to keep the wax wrap pliable and, and tacky so it sticks to glass bowls um, that will gunk up my needle and my throat plate and that was definitely like, you know, let me get my hammer. It should be right here. Yep. Don't I have like a little, I have the anvil. Oh, this, this is what I'm looking for. Hmm, steam is steam is lighter weight, but permanent. Yeah, me too, Louise. I, I really don't, I haven't worked on it at all. I'm just gonna mash a little bit here. <laughs> Apparently my hammer's dirty. Great. 
Yeah, Sydney. I, I I liked getting that gal's kit. It really made it easy and accessible. <laughs> you know? It wasn't a kit, but it was like the pre-made little chunks. Yeah, I'm too, Nancy. Do you think I'll be able to use it on my stream? There is a woman that uh, has created videos for it. So I'll have to check it out and see how the lighting is. Clean your hammer first next time. I'm kind of surprised it left that residue because I I really only use it here. Maybe it's from the nickel of my hardware. Nervous, 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 nervous. You know, part of what I'm thinking is that my needle is too heavy. Hey, Rebecca, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, that's such a bummer, Nancy, because it does seem like there's a lot of hoops to jump through, and some of them are fiery hoops. <laughs> Y'all are so funny in that poll where I ask you how many sewing machines do you own, because some of you don't think of sergers and cover stitches as sewing machines, so you're like, Two, but if you include the embroidery, the cover stitch, the vintage button buttonholer, the the thing that makes me breakfast, those, then maybe I have twelve. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I asked you about your sewing machines. I want to know how many you have. <laughs> you know? Oh, you have one for your buttonhole cutter. A little hammer for your buttonhole cutter. That's cute. All right. Let's see how it looks. Nice and flat. If I wanted, I could top stitch the inseam with the, the contrast thread. Let's do that. I'm not dragging this out, why not? <laughs> I don't have any zooms this afternoon, so I have plenty of time. It's right now, Shem. It's on it's on my YouTube community page. Yeah, I think the needle can be too heavy. The problem is then you're you're finding that tricky balance between is the needle going to uh, bend at all while you're pushing it through the seam. But at the same time, the smaller diameter might be easier to get on the seam too. The poll is on my community tab. Here, let me see if I can send it to you guys. It'll be fun to see if I can send you guys my pull tab, my, my pull. Let's see. So everybody's YouTube has a community tab. Most people don't know it exists. Um, will this work? Does this work? Yeah, I post content that's on the guild and I wanna ask you guys about that. So um, this isn't necessarily like content. I just posted this yesterday cause I'm experimenting with the community tab lately. So, um, oh, lost my thumbnail there so I can't grab things. I'm just now edge stitching my seam. Just so we have some top stitch thread. <laughs> well, here's the thing, Terry. If you just answer the poll, I don't know who's answering what. But if you write a comment, I know who's who. And I literally say no judgment. So, but everyone's acting like I'm still judging. And I'm just curious. This is nice and flat right here where I did the hammer. Doesn't mean I'm not nervous. We're a little scarred today. <laughs> oh, I'm getting stuck. Oh, these are crazy pants. Oh no. 
This one almost went off a little there. Sometimes when you're balancing on these thick seams, you know, you'll catch a little edge and it'll push you off right there. Can I let that go? I think I can let that go. Ooh, yeah, we'll see. Yep, I think seven plus is an option. Answer my poll. Don't tell me in the chat. <laughs> yeah, it's hairy. I can't believe how good a hammer works. The first time I ever saw that, I was like, whoa, a hammer. I was probably like everybody else who saw that. And then I, when I tried it, I was like, oh, this is so smart. Hey, Michelle, how's it going? Gardening jeans. I am just making straight up non-stretch jeans. This is fabric designed by a Ukrainian designer. So it was just to uh, passively support her. I think it's a her. All right. I think I'm gonna switch back. This is, I think is my, my, this is not my last time switching. Thanks, Elena. I thought, I, did you comment too? Maybe I'm just thinking of your Don Jean's comments. I kind of wanted to make these gardening overalls, but then I was like, I feel like I need to lean into this. I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, I post in the community tab, but it really, like if you're on your phone, it'll show up in your feed if you're like scrolling through YouTube. That's how you'd see it. It's just fun, you know? All right. We're getting close to being able to try these on. A little nervous, a little nervous. I have a little bit of a curve. The uh, pattern does not have a curve on the side seam. Uh, so if you're wondering why mine has it, it's just, I just added a little bit for some fit, that's all. Why is this not fitting? So I think this is getting like stretched a little, relaxed. Hmm. You just wrote the poll. Okay, cool. Oh, I didn't see Lou. Oh, there she is. Or he. I don't even know. <laughs> or they. Hey, Lou, how's it going? <laughs> Everybody looks different in my control room now. Like when I'm looking at the comments now, I see photos and um, other things, but I, they're tiny. Whereas y'all were each a color and I knew your color. Oh, look at that. That's not matching up at all. Oof. We don't want any torquing, you know? She, all right. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to overlock the side seams so nothing fancy here. I made these the full length, but only because I wanted some options. I'll probably wear these roll like folded up, you know what I mean? So yeah, I, I think full length is a little too much. Oh, nice, Lou. Nor twerking. <laughs> yes, we don't want either. <laughs> the workers in my service store used to call me when they got a new one. Oh my goodness. That's funny. Right now, I'm con uh, tr trying to tell myself that I cut the hems of the front crooked 
which is actually very likely because of that fabric issue I had, you know? All right, let's go to the serger. I do need some gardening pants though. I have my over, my like coveralls, which are really great, uh, but I would like just a pair of jeans that, um, that I can put tools in the pockets for, you know, like something a little bit rugged. I was even thinking maybe a built-in tool belt, but I, then I was thinking, oh, like those, uh, what was that? What's that really cute pant with the built-in tool belt? This feels spicy for me. I don't know why. All right, we're good, we're good. These are so stiff, I'm having to kind of make sure it's uh, going to feed okay. Let me get that aligned. It was a little hard to feed. <laughs> I don't know why. You know what? I'm going to press down my presser foot. That's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah, that's better. I added a little pressure to my presser foot. What's moving? Is it an optical illusion? Oh, it's this stuff. It's moving in the, the, uh, I used to have a serger that would rotate when I sewed. I can see why quilters use gloves. Imagine myself talking to myself like that when you guys aren't there, just saying weird little things. <laughs> right. Is Ray threatening to twerk? She can twerk. No, Sydney, you did not have, did you really? Added to the no singing at the table. <laughs> your, your house sounds fun. <laughs> How often I change the needles of my serger? Not as often as I change them on my industrial. Um, I recently did change them though because I was doing a lot of underwear and so I changed them to a stretch needle and then when I, that was done, I changed them back. So I recently have changed them. So scrap threads. Did you guys see the person who posted in the guild? Do we have someone trying to do stuff in the guild? I'm actually going to start posting stuff for um, trade or sale or something in there. All right. Uh, we're going to top stitch the side seam just to the bottom of the front pocket. I like I like doing this. I think it's a really easy step to skip by act not accident, but maybe you're like, I just want to get to the waistband. I just want to finish. I just want to see these. I'm tired of switching my thread back and forth, but I will tell you that it is really nice to mash the side seam down a little bit right there. And, and um, I, I've said this before, um, my hips are a little sensitive where my jeans press against me. So I like things to be kind of flat there. Oh, wait, 23. I don't have that option on the 
the thing. Oh, it was an a April Fool's joke. <laughs> That's a good one. Ouch. Jeez. All right, so I'm going to press this side seam to the back, but it's going to be kind of thick. An April Fool's joke. Last year, April Fool's was on a streaming day, and I played a very lame April Fool's joke on you guys, and none of you even knew I was doing it. <laughs> I'm glad I was relieved of that obligation this year. You see right here, I don't know if Shem is still here, this feels like the needle's too thick right here. Because while that is really thick, I feel like it's sewable, you know? So I'm just gonna go to the bottom of the pocket here, and it's kind of getting really big and hard to manage these. They're pretty stiff, you know? Where's my, okay, here's the pocket right here. And then I'm gonna put a fake bar tack in, which I just go back and forth. Ooh, I got a little off center there. Uh, now I'll do the side. You can do the whole out seam if you want. It's really tough to go um, in the leg, but I do it all the time. I like that look on pants. And a lot of times it's because, you guessed it, I sewed the side seams before I did the end seam. So I'm usually top stitching the end seam um, late. Oh, you're here, still here, Jim? Okay, cool, yeah. Yeah, see I think like right here, this little juncture where I'm folding back the yoke seam right here. I'm sure you can't tell that's what that is, but this is the yoke seam. It's pretty thick. And this feels like the needle's a little too thick for it. Like a thinner needle would be sharper and go through the thicknesses better. The joke, I pretended like I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, that you couldn't hear me <laughs> or something like that. It was like a microphone thing. Not even like, uh, like I was having a lot of those issues then, but I had fixed them. <laughs> so it wasn't really a good April Fool's joke. Okay. <laughs> it's right at the beginning. Okay, so we're doing the waistband now. Uh, which I think I have accidentally thrown away. Yep, here it is. With the instructions and some of the pattern pieces. I don't have this positioned quite right over here right now, so I keep losing things in the garbage can. The table's too close. All right. Okay. All right, so um, I'm going to cut across my zipper here and make it flush. And I gotta remember not to touch my zipper now until it's sewn in. Let's do one more like that. If you have the teeth remover tool, which they do sell on Waywack, you can um, remove a few teeth. I've tried doing it with pliers. I could not get them off. I see people do that and I, they have magic pliers, I think so. When a back tech like that, I get a next of my text 100, a what? A nest of your text. Um, it's just very thick thread. Yeah. It's probably, you probably don't need to use the Tex 100 to do your bar attack. <laughs> there was no word bank. <laughs> oh man, that's mean. <laughs> that's like mean. Oh, my little stitch came out here, tacking my pocket here at the top. Let me uh, fix that.
right here. I'm just, I'm just making this nice and flat and securing the waist here. This one's about to come out too. Why is that? Never had that happen. With small jewelry pliers. Jewelry, you say? Hmm. I've been thinking about putting it out in the guild of some, if there was like a jeweler in there or someone who's done even hobby jewelry making a trade. Because I have a bunch of, um, like I don't have like fancy jewelry or anything. I just like, I like necklaces and I have a few and I have had some so long they're just starting to like, need some little replacement things. That is not both my, oh here it is, okay. So I was thinking like maybe I could trade someone for a little help on how to do certain things. Okay. So I, I'm gonna start this new little series and hopefully I can keep up on it. And they're like one minute how to's called tiny tips. I've already made a few of them. They're really hard to make. <laughs> they're one minute long, but they're so hard to make. So, um, Here's my question for guild members. I'm gonna post those on like Instagram and YouTube. Maybe I have a TikTok, maybe I'll post it on there. I've never posted anything on there. But um, should I put them in the guild too? I know it's my guild, but I feel really weird posting my own content in there. Isn't that funny? Maybe I could do a topic and they're just out of the way. But I know people are joining the guild for like, tips and instruction and I, I'm not it's not really a space where I'm like constantly coming at you with like do this or do that I feel because I, I want it to be more of like a, um, you know a community and if you want that kind of stuff then you ask oh I have a question or whatever and then you know we can help you out or you're in the skill building sessions or the workshop or whatever so it's like then I'm not like you must do my stuff all the time. You know, it's like, you, you, it's self-directed. Okay. Yeah, I'll put a few in there then. Um, and maybe you, I can test them out on you guys too. <laughs> I should put them everywhere. Okay, so here's my waistband. This is the inner waistband. And I always start my waistbands from the inside and my pants are the wrong way. So I'm gonna turn my pants right side out. These are so stiff. I may put these in the laundry every time I wash my clothes to soften them. And they go, okay, cool. Yeah, I could do a little tiny tips. I need, totally need to be posting in the guild. Okay, should I be posting more? <laughs> um. Oh, okay. That was like, why is that folded like that? This fabric is so slimy. What is this? This this might be the lawn, the cotton lawn beta. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, if they want, Ray. <laughs> okay, okay, good. All right, I, I don't know why. I, I realize, like, maybe I'm being weird about this. Um, because I'm not, uh, like, that's not my, where my ego's at, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't need to be about me, so. Okay, so this is my label, and I think this one I'll stitch on the inside of the waistband. We'll do that on our next pass. We'll do this. We'll put it on here like this. We don't forget. And then let's put this weirdo right here. And I have to kind of put it low because she doesn't have much seam allowance. Like that. Should this be right here, this seam? That matched up, that matched up, that doesn't match up. Let's see how it goes on this side. <laughs> Fiona. Yeah, that's right, Michelle. There are several ways to do things. My way is not 
the only way. You know? Sorry, you can't see a whole lot, can you? <laughs> it's all about me. No! <laughs> yeah, when I saw someone write that, I was like, oh, I'm feeling kind of bad. I don't actually bombard you guys with things in there. Mainly because it's not like my place where I generate my content. My content's on YouTube, right? I'm, right now I'm debating. I didn't change the, the waistband. Um, oh, Rebecca, yeah, anyone's welcome to join the guild. And I also want to say, I know that these folks chat a lot in the chat. And I know a lot of people who watch every time don't chat in the chat. And that is totally fine. I am a lurker in most live streams myself. I don't chat. Um, I also don't want you to think like it's this like tight knit little club and no one else is allowed to join it because it's not like that in the guild. There's a lot more people talking in there because it's a little bit more, it's more private and it feels more familiar because you start seeing the same names and faces and you get a little bit more familiarity and it doesn't feel like you're just posting it into the world seeing if anyone likes it or sees it. You know what I mean? So and the guild is sosoguild.com, just sosoguild.com. If you put it in there, you can see there's all this information on there, um, my rambly kind of overview. It's free to join, and then there are paid groups, and the paid groups range from like $6 to $21 a month. And the middle one is kind of like the meat and potatoes of the group um, because it's got like the skill building sessions and wor workshops every month where you can come and just work on your project and I help you out. Um, and then there's a live show every month called the Ask a Zoe Question Show, which we're all kind of navigating and is kind of funny. Um, and um, so, yeah, check it out because you can just join and, and ask questions. It doesn't matter what ability you are or size you are. It's Everyone's welcome. All right, so I didn't change my waistband to reflect my pattern changes. So... I'm just trying to decide, do I just let it hang off? But I kind of want my waistband to be symmetrical. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a center back seam on my waistband right here like this so that it fits. So we're going to pin from the right front and the left front. I don't mind a center back seam on my waistband. I actually think it's a nice way to... Um, be able to fit your pants later too. Ah, thank you, Mullen. <laughs> I like that you guys are you guys are the content in there. On Ask a Ceremony, I need to take written questions. But the whole idea is that it's a live call-in show. But I do. I have been taking questions like the last part of it. People will write them in chat or whatever. And maybe there's just too many opportunities now for you guys to ask me a question or get help. And there's just nothing left for me to do. <laughs> All right. So look at this is what I'm doing. Sorry if you can't see. They're just really thick. So let me put my pants up here so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I just walked it from the front to the sides. And now I'm at the back here where I have a little bit. This is this makes sense because while I added to my waist, I also raised the rise quite a bit. And so when I do that, it, it tapers even more. You know what I mean? So. So let's walk this on the seam line since the waistband is curved just like this. And then we'll mark it. Mark it right here. It should be about the same on this side that it'll need. The notches are lining up everywhere else. It was just at the center back. <laughs> I don't know if I'm too helpful. <laughs> I miss things. In fact, just today I was like, you know what? I just realized I remember somewhere someone asking me about zippers that come undone or something. And I can't remember where someone asked me that and I know I didn't answer it. It's like one of those things where I see it in the chat and I want to go back. Okay, Shim, you, are, you can totally submit a question in writing. 
But look at that is equidistant on my notch. So, so that feels good. That's a win. <laughs> now, do I do it all the way up? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go all the way up parallel, mostly parallel to that edge there. And then I'm just going to cut this and leave a seam allowance right here and press it open like this. Then what I'm going to do, I usually like to top stitch on either side of this just to make it nice and flat. Ooh, a theme. Yeah, we could totally do a theme. That's an excellent idea. That's an excellent idea. That could actually prompt questions. Because I think you guys want to ask questions and you're like, I don't know what to ask. I don't know what to ask. <laughs> Aisha, how's it going? Welcome. All right, I'm going to tack my label here, get rid of this pin. And I just want to see if it's 5 eighths of an inch away. I don't want to miss it and I don't want it to go right through the forehead, you know? Details. Okay. And then this I'm going to do, I may have to do this at, uh, I don't know if I, 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 this is cream thread, you know? I could switch my label. Okay. All right, now we're gonna sew on the waistband and let's put it back to white thread. You joined the guild, whoop whoop. Welcome Vestigia. I hope you like it. There's some navigational things. So if you're in the guild, go to the left side, touch topics and there's a navigational topic and there's some like because early on we were all trying to figure it out. And so there's some tips in there, um, like written ones, and there's some video. I should do tiny tips on how to use the, those, the um, guild. It's not hard to use the guild, but there's like, it's just a new, a new format. All right, so I'm about to go over my zipper, which is right here. Meow. Okay. See, there's my zipper right there. Yeah, 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 exactly, Anna. I agree. You can ask whatever. But having the theme might be constructive. Okay, so when I get near my metal teeth, I usually walk my machine very carefully because ideally I can kind of wiggle around the teeth like that. So remember I have right sides to wrong side. I do all my waistbands and cuffs, my collar stand. I do all of it like this. It's just the way I figured out once to do. And I haven't looked back. <laughs> It helps a cavalier sewist like me do it right. Ooh, this, this curve is sharp. Okay, we're at the center back. Let's see if I can catch the label in there and the stitching that I used. I was thinking kind of like a rust brown top would look nice with these. I have a few light blue shirts, but they're not quite this kind of blue. This blue has a lot of um, yellow in it. Yeah, that's true, Shem. I like that. I like that, you guys. The Ask a Zoe Question Show is the last Friday of every month. And this past one was, it was in the evening, right? So the next one will be at 10 a.m. Pacific. You've been busy planning your retirement. Woo, woo. 
Nancy, I'm so excited. I, I feel like I, Nancy's my oldest viewer, the viewer that's been here the longest. She was there, I think, on my very first live stream. So uh, it's pretty cool. Like, I feel like you've been like kind of talking about that for a few years now. It's pretty huge news. All right, so we're approaching the front again, and same thing, I have these zipper teeth, which are right there. They're a little more obvious. It's really easy to forget that you're about to sew your zipper teeth because you can't see them. And I have to say, there's only been one time where I hit my tooth because I forgot that I was about to sew through them. I've lucked out so many times, so it isn't too hard to miss them. If you hit the tooth really hard with your needle, you're gonna have to change your needle. You can't keep that needle in there if it if it whacked your tooth. Don't don't try and do that. It'll sound weird, it'll sew weird, and it could end up being a little bit bent and it'll hurt the stuff underneath. So just be careful with that. All right, so now we have our waistband sewn to the inside, right? See how the label looks? That's fine. All right. Now we're going to, I'm gonna kind of finger press it up like this. If it were a lighter weight fabric, I'd probably iron it too. We could iron it though, actually, it might be a good thing. <laughs> yeah, Amy's going the other direction. <laughs> How's that going, Amy? I bet you're busy, like fitting a whole other job into your life. Because it sounds like when I, the people I know who've retired, it seems like retirement is a full-time job. <laughs> These pants are so stiff, they're knocking everything on the ground. Let me move some stuff. Okay. Here's my other waistband. All right, and so the amount I trimmed off, I tried to save. <laughs> Wasn't that, is it just like on my lap right here? <laughs> I would like to cut the same amount off. I really am uh, throwing away way too much stuff lately by accident. Oh, what's that? That's old. Well, I guess I lost it. Hmm. probably on these pants. So let's see. Ooh, these are crazy pants. I'm going to a home and garden show tomorrow. Maybe I need to wear the, these there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Shin. You start Monday. Woo woo. <clears throat> Shoot. I wanted to cut the same amount off of this one. You know? Let's put the notches back on here after I interfaced. And this one. That I have lost. I think I just lost that notch. Maybe it wasn't there. All right. <laughs> right? I was thinking the same thing, Malin. I was like, hmm. <laughs> my parents, I'm going there with my parents. <laughs> that seems a little bit uh, ostentatious, though. You know? All right, I just marked how much it was 
folding along the notch. Stitching on the center back seam. The inside has the top stitch thread. This is pretty invisible though. So if you have to do this, like the seam the back of your pants, usually a belt loop covers that too. Hi hey Frank, how's it going? Um, I would like to. You know, the reason I haven't is because I don't know the diameter of the, the screw I have right now. I, well actually, I can't just use the spring kind because of the shank. I mean, unless you know of a source, but um, where I've been looking, I didn't see it. But I would like an easy screw to remove, you know, like a bigger one to hold on to so I don't have to use my screwdriver. Because there's a couple people in chat that have those. It's one of those things where it's like, I know what I want, but I don't know, um, like the lot of places where you go to buy things, they don't list things properly or you don't know exactly what you're looking for. <laughs> Frank, were you the one that asked for the tutorial on the, the pedal, the rod to the pedal and how to adjust that? I feel like your name looks familiar and I, it, like that Juki video popped into my head when I, when I saw your name. I'm just trimming off all this interfacing so I can just see my edge, you know? Ooh, that got, that is thick right there. Why is that so thick? Oh, that's the seam. Couldn't even see it. The sunflowers really hide it. Yeah, finger screw. Thank you. That's what it's called. I'm never retiring. You're stuck with me forever. This is what retirement looks like for me. I'm building up my passive income with uploaded videos. <laughs> Oops. Okay. So we're going to put the waistband right sides together here. And I'm actually going to start from the other side because I like being able to see this edge right here. Right, so we're gonna line this up. And then that what, oh yeah. Did you ever find a way to adjust yours? I can show you uh, like what mine looks like right now, but um, I don't know if that would help you. They sell them on eBay for $10. Yeah, but then what if it's not the right one? You know what I mean? Because I have bought things for my Juki, but because it has the electronics, it's been a problem. Obviously something like a screw for the presser foot probably wouldn't be a problem, you know? Um, okay, I had to turn my pants and the fall out. Did I though? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> right, Nancy? I know. I have a machine on uh, Facebook marketplace right now and nobody's biting at all which makes me like sad so I got to figure out maybe I need to price it better okay so I'm just going to so one of the things I think about when I'm sewing my waistband on right now I'm gonna, let me get all this out of the way so let me tell you what we're looking at here all right, so we're looking at this upside down, right? This is the right side of my pant. This is the fly right here. And this is the inner waistband, this is the outer waistband. I have it right sides together. So the thing I think about 
right now is um, I, I've actually been like every time I sew jeans I think about this juncture right here a lot because it hasn't always been my strong area of sewing and so the thing I think about is this keeping this line straight so you see how it angles and that's okay I think that's okay just making sure it doesn't flare the other way because if it flares in a little bit that's okay because it's tapering you just don't want it to go the other way. That is a little bit weird. All right, and I'm just gonna sew on the waistband. We may come back to this. Keep my seam allowance. Oh, okay, cool, Frank. Thanks for the tip. I just don't know what size mine is, so I could just ask my dealer. They might even sell it. I could probably ask Meisner's. All right, so let's line up my center back seam here. You can pin all this if you want. I'm probably gonna have a little bit of a trouble because remember I, I oh, it just looks like, actually looks pretty good because I interfaced one and I did it the other. So sometimes that shrinks things. I think the next thing I'll be nerding out on is interfacing because I am now having this issue I have seen people talk about for years and I've never run into. Um, and that is that when I interface things, the texture of the fabric is changing after washing. So that means the interfacing is shrinking. And people say that's not a thing. It is totally a thing. Sewing parts online. Okay, I need to write some of these things down. I'm gonna write down. What's that? Oh, this is the cover of my index card. Sewing parts online. What were the two jeans you guys were talking about, Libby? Okay, the Birkin flares. We, we were talking about those the other day. I remember that. I have that on my list, but what was the other one that you were talking about? Yeah, you want to adjust the sewing machine foot pedal. I've never had to do that. But it is, the, the rod just overlaps like this. And there's a screw here and a screw here. And then the rod slides. Tell me what that other jeans was. And then I'm gonna write down the, the um, finger screw. eBay. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're, keep, we're, we're soldiering on here. Duchess. Wasn't there another one? Sew me something. Babette. That's it. I was going to say Gabby. <laughs> Babette. And then uh, the, another vote for the heroine. I'm actually pretty intrigued by those. Um, I don't have to always sew things in a, uh, oh my goodness, that's a lot of deer. <laughs> um, in, a, like, I want to sew as many patterns that are as size inclusive as possible, but there is also people at the other end of the size spectrum that need help too. You know, like there's a lot of petite folks out there that have trouble finding patterns too. And sometimes those are, don't have inclus, inclus, included inclusive sizing, but at least you could have this, the sewing tutorial for how to do the, the petite ones. Mm, nah, Katie, I don't think so. Because the fabric is what's bubbling. So the fabric is bigger than the interfacing. Maybe it's the glue. I don't know, something's going on, but I'm, I, feel, I feel like I gotta investigate in that. Okay, here we are, we have our waistband. So now this is the really important thing I used to always forget to do. Check to see, um, one thing we should have done actually is check to make sure our fly is the same left to right, right? Oh, this is thick, right? So 
when our pant was zipped up, you know, was our fly lining up across from left to right, right? Right there. Mine doesn't look like it is, so let's check it. Two percent spandex. That's such a random number. <laughs> hmm. Okay, Terry, thanks for coming. All right, so we're going to check our... So this is what I do. I zip up my fly and I look at the seam going straight across, right? Because, okay, I can't pull that down anymore. Otherwise everything's coming down with it. Um, now is the time. You, you, it gets really it's such a pain to fix this later. Yeah, I do the, the woven kind. I don't, that's what I'm wondering, Anna. I don't know. I've listened to a couple of things about it, but I didn't like... I don't know. I never had an issue. Okay, so let's make sure that that's lining up. It's it's almost lining up. Um, and then the other thing you want to look at is the width of your waistband left and right as well. Right? Make sure you get everything flat. Like my waistband over on this, this one is taller. So let's make sure. Let's get our pants nice and flat and like relaxed, right? I'm gonna fold up the seam allowance. I can tolerate this, but this right here, I would like these to line up and look at how off they are. <laughs> so let's draw that in right there. Well, now it looks a little better, but, oh, it's down here that it's a problem, right? I think that this angle, too, looks a little fishy. I kind of want to straighten this up like this, you know? How's it going, Elizabeth? So uh, I saw this that uh, this conversation about interfacing in the Beatrice group, Beatrice Dress Forms group, and the organizer said, you know, I've never had this problem, and I buy my interfacing from blah blah blah. And then I, I, uh, someone was asking about this in the guild, so I took that link and posted it in the guild too. Yeah, so some people pre-wash, essentially they're pre-washing their interfacing, Aisha. And um, I've been kind of loath to do that because I've never had a problem with it. But lately I've been having a pretty bad problem with it. Like my Azores dress, the whole yoke is bubbly. And there's nothing you can do about that. I try, I iron it away, but it doesn't look that great. Oh, Really? Interesting. All right, so now I'm going to trim some of these edges here. So this is, I want this lower one. So I'm actually going to take these stitches out, the, the, the further away line, only so I can trim this little corner here. <clears throat> it's only a few stitches, and these are easier to take out than the, to grab than the top stitching thread, which is nice because it's a smoother thread and thinner. Okay. All right, and then on this one, it's the outer one. So we definitely want to take this one out, the old one. Okay. There we go. I'm going to reinforce that a little bit. No, 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 no. I went, I almost went onto the old line. Oh my gosh. Okay. I 
feel better about trimming around this corner now once I have double checked the measurements. Just gonna trim the corner there. Now, theoretically, it doesn't wreck the glue, but, right? <laughs> no, I don't think it, it doesn't dissolve because, right, it's, it's, when you fuse it to fabric, it's still there. I know Love to Sew has a whole episode about this. So let's look at this corner. So you remember when we talk about these corners, remember this fabric, if you fold it along the seam line, that's what's going on in the inside, right? So that's why you want it trimmed away. I'm just very hesitant to trim this too close because if you have to adjust anything, you can't, you know, like you just took it away. If you need to adjust the height or whatever, right? Angle. One of these days, I feel like this is going to bend my all. <laughs> that would be crazy, but you never know. The, the all takes a lot of force. I don't like it feeling like a little ball in there either, you know? So sometimes I'll, I'll fold it all the way out, and then I'll go back and trim a tiny bit. That's so close. It gets crispy with time, yeah. Huh, interesting. On the card? Interfacing on the card. What does that mean? Like on the bolt? Okay. So now is the time, forever hold your peace if you want your waistband, you know, to make any adjustments width-wise or going across, right? So <clears throat> every time I have to remember my little method for doing this, don't I? I usually try and wrap around the seam allowances like this. So, but this might be a little thick. I'm not sure I'll be able to do it. So we're on the right side and now we're going to press our whole waistband and we're going to turn up under this edge and we're going to top stitch it down. It doesn't matter where it lands on the inside because it's already sewn. Your stitching may be down here, it may be up here. And the more you do these, the better they get. Okay, Lou, nice seeing you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Have a good one. All right, so we're going to press this waist seam up. I'm not gonna trim my waistband down uh, because I really like when it's filled up on the inside, but that being said, we'll see if it gets too thick in some areas. See like these waist, these uh, seam allowances are touching. So then your, your waistband is like the same thickness. Chahonka. <laughs> Store bought, oh bias, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you need to pre-wash your binding if you're going to wash it. Absolutely. I have ch cheated so many times and used binding to hem something. I don't think I can use these, but I'm t I kind of want to try. My pins are not going to work. Okay, can you guys see okay? I'll do it upside down. Ah, oh, that's better. Ugh. <laughs> They're so thick. Okay. Put the pants up here so they're not pulling. I'm 
gonna give it a good tug along this edge here. And then I like to do my landmarks first. Here is the notch there. Let's, let's actually press the top seam. I think that'll help a lot. I can turn my serger off. Make some space on the table here for these stiff puppies. I'll press this waistband along this top edge here, pushing the seam allowance in. Let's add a little water. Let's do what you're not supposed to do, huh? There is water in there. It's not empty. I'm not having this issue, by the way, on this Trico. It's the other stuff. It's the woven interfacing, fusible interfacing. That's the stuff I'm having a problem with. So uh, when Hearts Fabric sent me some, I haven't had a problem with that. When I bought the bolts from Joanne Fabric, which I literally think is the exact same stuff, I'm having a trouble with that. That's the stuff. And the stuff I got at Mill End, it, which is the same. I just kind of was like, maybe Mill End got like, like a second spat since it's a Mill End place. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I was just trying to give it the benefit of the doubt. All right, so now I'm gonna press along this little waistband edge here. I hope I can get these on, I'm scared. I just gotta trust, right? I gotta trust that I did the work. I did like six fit fitting samples. I was going to do a smaller seam allowance on the side seam and I forgot. I'm <laughs> just now remembering. <laughs> okay. Oof, these are bright, bright, bright. I love the color of this blue though, you know? I'm not doing belt loops. Hmm, interesting. I'm purposely skipping the belt loops because I don't usually wear a belt and because of that thickness issue. But yeah, you're right, Raquel. Shem uses this fabric and yeah, he says the belt loops get pretty thick. Hmm, before handling it. Well, it's not like it's hot when you go to sew it. So what, what does that actually mean? Like, uh, Because is that assuming that you're fusing the fabric before you cut it out? Cut out the pattern pieces, like block fusing? All right. So I'm just gonna fold it just past. This is gonna be so thick, you guys. I think I should move my, my label 
Huh. Hmm. <laughs> you haven't applied it yet? Okay, well. So my problem is that I will fuse it and then when I wash the pieces, it gets bubbly. It just started happening. But it's happened on some pieces I'm pretty disappointed about because they were, they were really nice pieces of clothing, like my Azores dress. And that's like a solid green linen. So it's very obvious. Yeah, I will definitely use the hammer. So check out what kind of interface you buy because the steam on kind won't adhere right without steam. Yeah, and I am using steam. I've always used steam, even when people were like, don't use moisture, but I it did, didn't it didn't like go on as nice without the moisture. Okay, I need some better pins here. I need some really chunky pins. Let's see what I got here. I know I have, I thought I had a little box of more quilting pins. Maybe not. Oh yeah, they're right here. Yee. Okay. Forgot I had these. Okay. So Aisha, what if you interfaced a piece of fabric and yeah, and then washed it? Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. That'll make you feel better. Like, it's like wrangling a cat. So I have news on the kitten or the cat <laughs> that's a trying to adopt us. <laughs> we let the dogs meet it last night and everything went really good. Um, and then he was unfazed. He could care less about the dogs. And I was like, dude, you have to care about these dogs because if you run, they're going to run after you. And we don't want that to happen, you know? not just block fusing. So what do you mean letting it cool before you handle it? Just after you iron it on, just give it a good five minutes before you start jostling it around. Yeah, that doesn't seem like that would change things. Jostling it, I don't know. Like I don't doubt that there's merit to their findings at all. I'm sure that they've done some work on figuring that out, you know? Yeah, maybe I'm not letting it fuse completely. Is that what we're, is that what we're, cause tell me if you think I'm doing it wrong. Like, I don't mind. <laughs> Oof, this is really thick. I'm bending all these pins. I kind of just wanna iron it down, you know? Maybe not pin it. He, he doesn't have a name yet, but we've been, we were f joking around about names last night with Cricket and a text. Um, oh, I can't even poke this through. Um, uh, yeah, the uh, shape flex. You have to let it cool to let it properly adhere. All right, I, I understand that. But it's cooling always, you know? Like I think even just walking from there to here. Before working, okay. Hmm. Well, and I usually, what I do is I iron things and then I sew them the next day. How's it going, Lisa? Yeah, so the kitty, he's such a lap kitty. So we're already like calling him Barnacle, like we call Loki Barnacle. And I was, and, and then um, one of Cricket's books she really liked when she was a kid was this book from Hawaii called The Littlest Opihi. Um, 
and it was about this little barnacle that was learning how to stick to the rocks. <laughs> it was really cute. And so he was a little barnacle um, in Opihi. And so I was like, well, we can call him Opihi. O I, I was all, oh, he's the littlest Opihi. And then they were like, ooh, that's a good name. That's when it started. And I was like, we can't call him Opihi. <laughs> Yeah, okay, thank you, Libby. Right? Okay, I feel better. Like, yeah, I've been doing it pretty good for the for a long time now. I stopped using the non-fusible because it looks like cellulite, and I don't need any of that in my life. Yeah, it's plenty of time, exactly. I see, as soon as you bend it, it can make the bomb break. I call horse poo. Yeah. You see, oh, okay. Raquel knows what she's talking about. Let it cure. Okay, well, I mean, cure is just our layman's term. It's cooling. So, Raquel, you say um, apply it with the seam. Hmm. Okay, okay. I really could be handling it, but I just feel like it's never been a problem. I'm so still that I thought my camera was frozen. <laughs> I'm loving the chemical engineer, the polymer engineer's um, take. Thanks for weighing in, Raquel. I'm sure it's triggering to, to talk to all of us who know nothing about this. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe it's not shrinking that's what's happening you know it's but it's definitely like my whole yoke which is a huge yoke on that dress is bubbly it's little tiny bubbles all over it which means that the surface under it is pulling like this and then the the outer fabric isn't is um you know it's like trying to shrink up yeah maybe that's it Don't autocorrect your word, Raquel, if you were trying to write the panini. I'll get, I, it, YouTube doesn't like that in my chat, sorry. It's not, it's not your problem. It's just the weird thing. Um, hmm. I'm gonna pull this. So one of my little things, this is gonna be really thick to sew, but um, if you're doing cuffs or waistbands or something like that, yeah, the Azores. Um, I like to wrap this little, I think this is how I do it. I wrap it around the seam allowance. You see that right there, the seam allowance right here. So sometimes the seam allowance can fall behind right here, right? It'll get, it'll get you know, behind this piece you just sewed or whatever, but, um, I like to not do this because then you have the potential for this little edge to pull out, right? So I wrap it around that like that best I can. But this is pretty thick and so I'm kind of toying with like maybe trimming this down a little bit, which I don't like doing because it, it gives you no options if something happens later and you need to get it wider or something. Yeah. Okay, Amy. Good luck on Monday. <laughs> Have a good day, kiddo. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it was made during the, the great panini. <laughs> now I'm getting hungry. Hmm. Hmm. I, I want to trim this away. So this is the other thing. Like, say I went snip right here, right? It seems so tempting. So if you do that, remember what happens now is that you have this little raw edge right there, right? So trimming off, so this is where we're at. This is the outer waistband, right? And in here, here's my waist seam. Here's the first edge that I sewed the waistband on with, right? So I wanna wrap this around and get that in there, right, like that but see how it's hanging down because it's so thick. It's like this little folded edge is lower than my seam. 
So, oh, well, we'll just make this smaller so it's not wrapping around something so thick. But if I, if I cut that off, snip right here like this, it'll put a raw edge right there. And that raw edge, when I go like this, it's gonna poke out right there. Nice, Terry. Night, Anna, thanks for coming. Interfacing can shrink under the iron if you apply too much heat, yeah. There's nothing like interfacing to get a sewing crowd riled up. Yeah, I, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be just washing and drying it. Night, Mullen. Thanks for coming. Have a good weekend. Thanks for modding. A damp press cloth. I don't do that. All right, all right, all right. Let's see here. What do I want to do with this little thickness here? Hmm. I like to open it up and go, what do you want to do here? Could I pull this like this? What if I did that? Hmm, that's an interesting idea. I don't think that would help me though. I think it's too thick. And see if we did this. This leaves us a little edge to hang out. I think we just need to deal with it being a little bit lower. So let's try and pull this, pull this. Ugh, just doesn't want to. Yeah, it's not gonna do that. It's so thick, oh, okay. Maybe what I could do is I'm gonna trim this corner right here, just a little bit. So you see this little edge here because this was poking up there. I was wondering, Michelle, I felt like that's what the case was when I bought it from Millen. I thought, eh, you know, this could be, you know, it's a discounted place. What's this thread right here? Um, but then I bought two whole bolts from Joanne recently. Yeah, it's always, it was, it, Mullen makes it as long as she can and she's like, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> okay. Let's get to finishing this up. After I finish the waistband seam, all these will need is a button and buttonhole and hems, but I'll probably leave the hems for a bit to decide what I want to do. I'll just like, I think I just want to roll them up once, like not roll, roll. All right, let's see how this side, this side's easier because it's thinner because of this little facing here. Okay, we have to worry about our zipper teeth again. Um, I wanna do the, the, the thicker thread. Get all this out of my way. I also wanna use this thread because um, I think it's gonna be a little stronger. They just had a Scandinavian design challenge on spoon flower. <laughs> the designs were really cool. I have a collection in my YouTube or YouTube of uh, favorites on in spoon flower and it's all Scandinavian fabrics. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna start at the center back right here and go around. I don't ever start at the center front waist. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Um, where's my hammer? Okay, we're gonna hammer a little bit. If you have headphones on, good thing the neighbors aren't here. And then um, let's hammer this. I this is gonna be a problem. I think. Why am I bleeding? What is that? Oh look, I got poked. I didn't even know. OK, 
Okay. I'm really bleeding. What the heck? I don't even feel that. I have a whole huge first aid kit of Band-Aids. It's ridiculously big. I just need a half a Band-Aid. Because <laughs> it's my little old pinky. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's Sharpie. <laughs> Scandy style. Th some of them are Scandinavian designers. My, my collection uh, that I have for myself, like, is, is both. I don't, I don't know what the challenge was. I just know that, that they mentioned something about that because they just announced the winner. And I was like, ooh, I'm gonna go through that and put a bunch more in my, my collection. That I, I, I like that, the folk Scandinavian style of design. Can you guys hear how thick that is? We want all of our fingers and toes after this. Just all of them, that's all. I can't imagine doing belt loops right now. I'm definitely below the waistband seam back here, but I didn't want to adjust it. Just, just because I didn't really want to upset the apple cart right now while I'm sewing. Some of these are going directly in the garbage. I don't mind my stitching being a little low the, below the, the waistband seam on the inside. I, I don't want it, you know, I don't really want it to be, but, um, I'd much rather my waist seam not show on the front. Um, just look at their Spoonflower Design Challenge. Ooh, I think that'd be really cute, Terry. Marimako is your favorite? Yeah, I like Marimako. Okay, so we're at the teeth again. This side feels like the, the ma max amount of thickness I want to deal with, and the other side's gonna be thicker. Yeah, that would be pretty fantastic, Terry. I feel like this corner could be out a little better. So let's see. <laughs> okay, this will be the easy edge, except for the fact that I have to go under the the into this throat space here. I'm getting into the pin territory. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, it comes in uh, other colorways, Terry. So I put two links in the description, one to this print and then one to, oh, that scared me, gosh. My, my back stitch, I have two back stitches right here and over there. And then the pants just grabbed this one and scared the heck out of me. Um, there's another link in the description to all the Ukrainian designers collection that they created. And then you'll see that same print in there in a few different colors. And she could have more than that's in their collection too. You can just go to her page. I think this is that's one thing Spoonflower has to work on. I really think what they need to do. Oh, I ran out of bobbin thread. Oh. Um, I think they have to start making it so that if you have a fabric. <laughs> oh, thanks, Ray. Where's the alert? Oh, it's off. No. Why is the alert box off? There it is. Oh, I got it in time. Thanks, Ray. That was nice of you. Um, I think what they need to do is like, say you do, you have a design and it comes in six different colors and it's the exact same design, just different colors, color, different color background, different color, whatever. They need to make it so that you see the same, all of the fabrics on one page and then you can pick between the colorways. So yeah, you might want the twill, Terry, or the um, Cypress cotton canvas or the linen cotton canvas. It's really, really thick. Like doing, think about it from the, the um, aspect of doing your buttons and buttonholes. Oh, everything, this, oh. and use your biggest table <laughs> because everything's landing on the floor with this. <laughs> it's so stiff, it just pulls everything off the table. Um, But yeah, because I, I sometimes I'm like, does this does this person make a different like color? And then they need one that's different scales, you know? Yeah, it would be hard to wear. It, it would be hard to wear too. That's a good point. Yeah. And the twill looks a lot like this too. So you'd still have that denim look. It'd be way more comfortable. Plus it's the color of a sunflower jacket isn't probably something you're going to wear in the dead of winter. So the twill will be lighter weight. <laughs> oh, Ray. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you did? It's not. It's 11.7 ounces. Was the denim you used, did it have um, like any enzyme treatments to it? I hate fussy stuff, you know, like. <laughs> bobbin bonus. <laughs> I like, I like a bobbin bonus. Oh, cool, Rebecca. That's awesome. That's really cool. Oh, right, Shem, that would be nice too. Yeah, that, that would actually be kind of nice. Because I've asked plenty of designers, I'm like, can you make this in something that's like more of a wear of a scale? You know, I just say it nicely, but I'm like, can you make this like any other scale? Most designers are really happy to accommodate you. Okay, I'm, I'm at that thickest part right now and it's going okay. But I'm also hand cranking right now. Oh, cool, Terry. Okay, okay, this is a very, uh, very easy spot to forget you're about to sew through your zipper. Your zipper's right here. This is where I've gotten lucky so many times. Um, so just remember, like, look, I didn't have to adjust it at all. I went right through. It really can avoid the teeth. It's such a good little needle. Mm 
Okay. I survived. Yeah, right, Shim? Yeah, exactly. Well, and I think also what's really nice is if, say, you wanted to change scale of the print on the garment in smaller spots or for a lining. Yeah, that's so true, Shim. Some don't. <laughs> Yeah, do you by any chance have their their swatch kit? I I really like that uh being able to check this like weight of things. It's pretty helpful. You could also just get a swatch. It's five bucks for a swatch of the fabric. Um, but the swatch kit itself, I don't know how much that is. It used to be really cheap, but now I think they've at, they've made it a little bit more. Okay, my last thick spot. I've lost my scissors again. Are they in here. <laughs> Center back. I've toyed with uh, taking out the um, label I sewed in to just any kind of thickness, you know. I should have put it off to the side. I'm surprised I didn't think about that. <laughs> Moaning and sighing. Yeah, my dogs know when it's six o'clock and in the evening their food is a food that we add hot water to and they listen for the sound of the um, water being turned on and then they're just like pew. Okay, I did it. I did it, I did it, yeah. Um, so here you can see where I didn't catch the waistband on the inside, it's in the ditch. Right here too. I did pretty good though, considering how thick it is. Look at that, going through the teeth. Ooh, nice, Sydney. I would just do the, oh, the bodice, yeah, exactly. Okay, made it. I think that if I didn't have white hair, my hair would be white after sewing these jeans. <laughs> um, do I want this on the outside? No, not really. The year seems kind of cool when it is the year, but once it's not the year, it doesn't seem as cool. Maybe I would do some hand stitches. I don't know. Oh, well, there you go. Terry calls it. Boston Standard Time. <laughs> that is, I might steal that. Yeah, it's pug standard time for sure. <laughs> oh, I thought that was my water glass. There's too much stuff over here. Okay, um, I could put this on later. We just really want to know if these fit, don't we? <laughs> Do you think, Sydney, that there's going to be a moment when you've sewn that bodice that you're mad that you sewed it. Doubt it. <laughs> I don't know about the fly facing in the fly being navy blue. Those look pretty darn good though. Glad I did the interfacing. Thanks, Shim. I can already see like I would want it right here, you know? All right, let me try them on. I don't even know where the mouse is anymore. I'm gonna put my changing um, camera change thing up. I'm also gonna set my microphone over here so I don't whack it. 
I've, I don't think I've ever done this before, have I? Gotta take my shoes off. I wore sandals for the occasion. Oh yeah, these are some crazy pants. Oops. <laughs> oh, I had a little, I had a cute headband on today, but it hurts my head. So. Not bad. They fit pretty darn good. They need the button for sure. That's exactly why I did that, Terry. Oh my gosh, the wildlife today. Oh, I forgot, forgot the microphone. I'm going to zoom it in a little. Burn up the brightness. Mm. So I need to put a button there. They feel great. Do these sunflowers make my butt look big? <laughs> Oof, they're tight though. Oh, they're not tight, but they're like, you know, they're not uh, stretchy. <laughs> I'm just gonna cuff them a little bit. Oh yeah, no stretch, man. Ooh, how do we live without it? Can't see chat though. They fit really good. There's like just a like a, like a little bubble of air around them in the inside. You know? Chinese food sounds really good. Grocery stores Chinese food does not sound really good. Although uh, around here there um, are people who uh, legit know how to make sushi and Chinese food at the grocery stores. So that's pretty cool. Yay! Thanks for the recommendation, Libby. <laughs> You're still here. <laughs> it's designed for no stretch. Very kawaii. I love it. <laughs> right, exactly. I need to go see a Van Gogh exhibit. Yeah, the width of the legs is really good. Definitely wear them tomorrow. Yeah, I might do that. Um, I'm sitting in them too, and like they feel really comfortable when I'm sitting. I mean, they feel like non stretch pants, you know, but um, I don't even think I'm really getting much of a gap in the back. I can't, where, why? I can't figure out the camera. I mean, they are a little low in the back. And I think by the end of the day, they'd be uh, broken in. Those six muslins definitely paid off, didn't they? What do you think of them with the white shirt? They're really cute. I love them. You mostly prefer non-stretch, Michelle. I sometimes don't like um, stretch either. 
At the end of the day, though, I am happy, you know? <laughs> Yay! I'm really happy. I think they deserve a colored top, though, you know? Um, maybe the brown or the light blue. The white will work, though. Tone it down. They're really comfortable. I had to work really hard to get them that way, but hey. Um, you know how I've always wanted to do like a pin tuck shirt like I did for Sonia Phillips um, book? I think that would be really nice. Like a white pin tucked um, shirt with this would look really cute. Yeah, a go-to for summer, yeah. I'd make these again. I don't have a button. Well, I have a, a, a home machine that does buttonholes, Raquel. Yeah. I would honestly, I would do a, um, oh, a light blue gingham. Hmm. This blue is such an interesting blue. You know what I mean? Like it's so... It's so um, yellow, you know what I mean? Like it's not a warm blue. And I find that like the chambray is a very warm one. Uh, I love them. I love them, Ray. Um, I think I'm gonna cuff them, Michelle, but I'm also realizing like because of the spoon flower, it's a white cuff. So maybe I would just hem them short and make them cropped. I would like to just roll them up one time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think they could be a little too much, Lisa, but I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, I love that pin tuck shirt I made last summer and I had to send that away. <laughs> that was yellow but I would like a white one, you know? Cool, yay, we made it. Um, I'm not streaming next week. I forgot I haven't even done a calendar for April. Wow, I do be slacking, huh? Okay, um, I don't know. I'll be here, I'll be live in a couple weeks again. So you wanna see them full length? Yeah, I tried to zoom in so you could see them close up full length. I'm on my tippy toes. <laughs> but I think I like what a, like a light brown. The blue might be a little too much. Yeah, exactly, Michelle. Yeah, well, you know, um, this is how my Dawn jeans are, Shem. They're frayed. I got this idea from Libby. <laughs> Do these fray? Do these, does the dogwood fray? Oh, we mean rolled down. Sorry, I'm sorry. That makes more sense. They're really long. They're not too bad rolled down, huh? Hmm. They're already breaking in. <laughs> okay, Michelle, thanks for coming. Oh, I really appreciate you being here. No, it, I was just telling this to my husband, like, because um, I did a stream just for the guild the other day. And it was part two on sleeves. And I knew a lot of people were, couldn't come. But it ended up just being me at first. And then Libby and Ray came. And I told him, I was like, I don't think people realize how much, like, during, like, the YouTube live stream, if nobody's there, it does feel kind of funny. So, really, thank you guys for coming. It's huge. You're really huge. <laughs> so. 90s vibe. <laughs> hey, Rachel, how's it going? Yeah, I know. 
I didn't think I'd like them full length either, but a straw wedge sandal. I was wearing these. Let's see. I was wearing uh, these leather clogs. Let me pull up the strap. I still haven't fallen live on camera yet. So they look like this. I definitely need this button. Like they're not moving, but I can feel like it's flaying, sp splaying right there. That'll be good. <laughs> All right, well, I'll probably head out, but I do have to come up with my schedule for April and I have no idea what I'm gonna do, but I have a few things in mind. Maybe another Hearts Fabric uh, po uh, uh, project. <laughs> um, my husband's overalls that I promised him. Um, and maybe a gadget stream. Gadget week stream. <laughs> totally, Libby. That's exactly what I said. That's, I, at one point, I told him, I was like, you guys don't have to stay if you're just here to make me feel better. <laughs> uh, totally. Night, Fiona. Thanks for coming. Nice to see you. Sunflowers. Yay. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for the support this week. It was really fun. The overalls. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of down for the overalls too. I'm gonna use existing jeans and then draft the bib. Cause I haven't seen men's overalls. Unless you guys have seen a men's overalls pattern. Thanks Terry, gadget week. I'll post a tiny tip today too in the guild. I'll do that, I'll do, I'm gonna do them there first I think. And then that way um, it's a little perk, you know. And Barbara, <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, so fun. Good night, Louise, thanks for coming. Enjoy the city. If you're wanting to get back to sewing, I hope you can soon. Night, Rebecca. All right, you guys, we'll have a great weekend. Uh, next week, um, I have stuff in the guild, so I don't have anything on YouTube. I'll have an uploaded video though for you guys soon. So it'll probably be a review on the Half Moon Jeans. So we'll see. I feel like maybe I need to not do a review, but I feel like I should, you know, so. All right. Have a good weekend, you guys. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.